So we have our next three by three up. <laughs> And I can already tell who this is. Yeah. This is the most male anime fan oh. generic list ever. Not a single romance or, <laughs> or no. slice of life. Men, men, men. 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 Boys, boys, boys. boys. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Trash Taste. I'm Connor once again joined by the boys. Jerry and Gons. Did you say episode? Episode. <laughs> episode. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Episode of Trash Taste. Yo, it's uh, one of those days where we all said, yeah, we're ready. And then you started talking and I'm like, wait, oh yeah, I just said, yes, we're recording now. Sorry, it's uh, this is the <laughs> first recording after the New Year's. My you brain- really look dead, Carl. Yeah. You look, I, I think I look dead too. Right? <laughs> it's This is not gonna be coming out just after New Year's, so it's gonna be a little bit delayed, but uh, this is for the record. Well, I've just time-gated this episode. Gant, you should be excited because we're talking about your favorite thing on the planet. Genshin Impact? No, oh. shut the f up. <laughs> we're talking about that, the other thing. <laughs> What's the we're other talking about your favorite thing, you mean, Joey? No. <laughs> Arcane. We're talking about anime. Okay, it's our it's our monthly or bi monthly anime episode, uh, and uh, we're going to be doing another three by three. But we're not just going to be doing a regular three by three because we've done that before mm. in the past. Mm -hmm. Instead, we're going to be judging other people's three by threes. More specifically, we asked a bunch of our guests, our previous guests on Trash Taste, to send in their anime three by threes, and we're going to be judging their good or bad tastes in anime. Uh, yeah. We didn't get everybody's two no. by three. Yeah, because uh, some of them guests haven't watched anime. No. Yep. Uh, and some that have haven't watched enough anime, like yeah. Pete and Chris. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the people that we have, or the guests that have submitted their three by threes, are Charlie, Didas, Emily, Kaho, Kevin, Mudan, Shindoel, Sydney, and I guess Laser Beam is also included. Okay. Um, this so uh, this should be interesting. Uh, I always like three by threes because you can normally get a gauge of someone's personality and mm. taste just by seeing like a view of their three by three. True. So I think it'll be a fun game before it's revealed who the three by three uh, that we're judging is mm. that we have a guess of uh, who that person is based on our- <laughs> Like get a, get a quick personality yeah, read get, on get, it. Get a you sounded so tired that you explained it in a way that sounded more confusing than it was. <laughs> You're like, uh, I'm gonna guess. We're gonna guess the guest. The we're gonna guess the guest. Basically, we're gonna have a look at the list. We're gonna pop one up and we're gonna try and have a get, you know, try and gauge who it might be. And, That's uh, what I just said, Connor. I know, but I'm saying it more excited, Connor. <laughs> you, exactly. you both explained it like shit. Word for word. <laughs> oh, you explain it then, Joey. Yeah, you on. explain it better than me. Okay, yeah. here's how it's gonna work, ladies and gentlemen. Listen carefully, okay? We're gonna be shown a three by three. We don't know who it is. And before we start talking about each individual one, we're gonna take a quick look at it and go, hey, that seems like this person's three by three. Yeah. We're gonna each have a guess. If we're right, then cool. And if you get if it wrong, not, you don't know the guests. It, yeah, and then we don't know the guests and we've just uh, shamed all of their family. Yeah. All right, well, let's pull one up, shall we? Fuck, that's why he's the anime man. <laughs> that is why he's the anime man. All right, so give us our first three by three. Right. Okay. Okay, so- What the fuck is- <laughs> We've got- Okay, it's over here now. Okay, so we've got Clanad or Clanad After Story. Is that Gundam Seed? Gundam Seed. Is that Gundam Seed? I really hope it's not Gundam Seed. We have Princess Mononoke, we have Rama Half, we have Oriimo. Is, God, did you make this? <laughs> <laughs> we have Welcome to the NHK. We have Naruto, potentially Shippuden. We have Hajime no Ippo and we have Yu Yu Hakusho. Oh, this okay. is tough. Who the fuck would make this list? Can you pull okay. up the names Okay, again? okay. I'm, I'm, there is one big like indicator here, even mm. without looking at the guest names. Uh, uh, are you able to, sorry. Are you able to put these? Absolutely. <sighs> like, well, well, Absolutely, 100%, yeah. this person grew up in the same era as myself. Yeah. Because there is no fucking way someone would put Gundam Seed on their list if it wasn't the very first Gundam <laughs> and maybe the only Gundam that they've watched. You know, that's- <laughs> If you've seen any other Gundam, you would not put Seed on here. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And no, like nobody else would put it unless it's like the first Gundam you put on there. Yeah, wasn't, I, I think Gundam Seed when it was airing uh, on Cartoon Network or something, yeah. I don't know where it aired. Uh, it was like the most popular show on, yeah. the, on the entire network in, I th in yeah. the West. I think I actually might know who this is because from the list we've been given, there is only one person I know that would <laughs> have, the, <laughs> have the balls to put seed on here and also has openly expressed how much they love Clanad and Oriimo. Don't? No. <laughs> I think it's Didus. 
Uh, it would make a lot of sense. He I, does I, love. I'm, he Ad loves Clanad. He loves Hajime Nipo. He loves Orimo, and he would put. <laughs> he like he likes Hajime Nipo. Yeah. yeah, I've never heard him talk about Hajime Nipo before. And I think he's mentioned Rama Half before. Yeah, I, so I reckon we, this is Dietus. I does, see yeah. the degeneracy. Like I, I know a fellow brother when I see one and yeah. then someone like puts Orimo right slap bang <laughs> in the center as I would have done. And I think I did do actually. See, uh, I can already see it, right? Like Dietus is like, you know, he's he's <laughs> listing off like the obvious ones that immediately come to his head, like Orimo and like Princess Mononoke, Hajime, yeah. you know, Klana stuff like that. Yeah. And his attempt to seem cultured is him putting welcome to the NHK. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, no, no. I actually, I, it's not all the mainstream stuff mm. I love. I also watch other ones like Welcome to the NHK, but he also forgets Welcome to the NHK and it's mega horny as yeah. well, he, which he, is also very Dietus. Is this Dietus? Yes. 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 We know our friend. Wow. Read you like a book. He does. Yes. I don't know anyone in this day and age who still references Naruto as much <laughs> as- him. I don't know That's anyone true. else who references. He just always says something Naruto. Yeah, but is that anything like uh, special? I don't know. I feel like a lot of people reference Naruto. Yeah, I feel like Naruto references are becoming less common, Gaunt. Yeah, like now that Jujutsu generation. Kaisen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it's, I'm sure this is how like, I don't know. This is probably some uh, older equivalent involved here. Mm -hmm. but, that's true. Uh, I feel like he, he springs up Naruto more than anyone else or any normal amount. Any that any any allowed amount should be it should be brought up. That is true. That, that is true. true. Um, one thing that surprises me, being on here, I'm really hoping you have seen more Gundams. Or this is <laughs> I I, I'm just I'm just not I'm I not. Think, I'm not I don't think he's seen more Gundam. Well, so, gonna... Okay, so I don't know what's so bad about Gundam Seed. Can you explain to me why Gundam Seed is bad and what, what even it is? Well, it's a Gundam for one. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> great. Um, it was just I don't know. Like, have I... you seen any Gundam? Nope. Mm. And there's probably a fair amount of viewers okay. watching. You haven't seen any Gundams. So okay, so, 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 so when most people when most people bring up the, what their favorite Gundams are, and I'm talking like the you know the kind of older the first half of the Gundam franchise, right? A lot of people bring up like Wing. A lot of people bring up Double Zero is a very common one. Seed, like I don't know how do you? I'm trying to figure out the words to describe why Seed is questionable. It's hard. Uh, it's not hard. It's just uh, the writing quality fucking jumped off a cliff in, especially in the second season. Mm. Um, it's that one Gundam that's got mega, mega popular. Uh, I mean, you mentioned Wing and uh, Double O. I don't think any of them hold a candle to how popular Seed got back in the day. Yeah, And it was one of those Gundams that <clears throat> you look at the entire history of Gundam, right? You look at this entire franchise, with how many shows there are. And then it's this one that gains the mega mainstream popularity. Mm. And it's just confusing because- Probably right place, right time. Maybe. It's the sort online equivalent, you know? <laughs> Holy shit. That is actually, <laughs> that is actually, oh my God. That is actually the perfect it's, analogy. It's the seed Most, is seed no. is to the Mecha franchise as Sword Art was to the Isekai franchise where it was just right place at the right time, mega, mega popular, but not the best writing at in any stretch of the mean. Yeah. And you watch Gundam Seed and that might be your introduction to Gundam. Mm. And then you watch any other Gundam and you're like, oh, mm. this is shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is like, or you watch even like any other mecha show and you realize how- uh, I don't remember. What is, what is Gundam Seed out of 10 on a scale if you had to give it a rating? Like a five for me. I, I like five, six. Yeah. It's pretty brutal. Especially after the second season. There's yeah. more coffee. Do I we, need more coffee. Do we okay. have Do we have a reason why he, does, did he say why he chose the things he chose? He didn't give any reasons. He didn't give any reasons. So some, oh, some of the guests have given reasons as to why. Yeah, some, some, um, I, mean, I do know for a fact that Didus always talks about how much he loves romance and slice of life yep, shows. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and so I'm assuming that's why Clanet After Story is on here. Oh, he loves, and like if, if you want to if extent. you want to meet someone who loves Clanet more than I do, it's Didus. Like Didus fucking loves Clanet, which is based. Yeah. Uh, he also loves Orima as well, which is not based. My, I like, Dinos is like a fucking brother to me, man. <laughs> Every time I watch a trashy romance show, I, I know he's like, I message him and yeah. he's always into the same shit. Yeah. You know, yeah. we both fucking love Orimo. He gets the masterpiece that is domestic girlfriend as well. He understands that shit. Well, but, well Dinos just likes car crashes. Yeah, that's the thing. When I, when I talk to Dinos about shows, he often 
if he one thing that he always makes very apparent is that if he feels like he can predict what's going to happen, mm. he's not interested. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I guess the reason why he likes our emo and perhaps <laughs> maybe domestic girlfriend <laughs> is that there's such car crashes that he doesn't know where it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that is true. And but that, okay, uh, like, to me, that is an indication of a show that's good. There's an uh, indication of a show that's just trying to subvert expectations. Sure. I wouldn't and yet, say, of course, if you're going to fuck your brother, that's pretty. That's a good way to subvert expectations. I, I wouldn't say so. Okay. Let me let me let me defend the fucking trashy <laughs> romance genre. Okay. Because I'm I'm really addicted to the, to the show. Play okay. Actually, do you know what? Do you know what I did? Uh, <laughs> in the Christmas holiday. Uh, I don't know if you would be, you know, if you know what this is, Joe. Uh, uh, I watch White Album 2. You watch White Album 2? For yeah, the first I, time. I fucking know it. <laughs> just, okay. My question is, you could have watched anything else. Because and you watched White Album 2? Because uh, it was the one fucking car crash romance that I just did not watch. Yeah. What the fuck is White Album 2? Imagine School Days, Mid but without- thousands. Yeah, imagine School romance. Days, but without the murdering. Oh. And it's about that. Yeah. It's, I actually think it's on the same level of school days in terms of like the pure fucking shitty reaction and the car crash of an ending that you got. There's like, look at this. This screams like mid 2000s it, trashy it was originally, romance. Yeah, it was originally an error gay, I think, or, or at least a visual novel. Probably, probably from, an error Probably an error gay from the yeah. mid 2000s. Uh, got mega, mega popular in the Dojin world. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <clears throat> and then when the anime came out, I, I watched it when it came out and uh, I, uh, you know, I'd forgotten about it until you brought it up. That and, ending. Uh, I'm really glad. I'm really hoping you didn't bring it up. This was this was an ending where they set up a they set up like a love triangle. I, f I fucking love this shit. They set up a love triangle, <laughs> and then the author just sets everything on fire. And I fucking love that shit, man. That's you just <clears throat> described a mid two thousand. Sounds stressful, games. huh? Sounds stressful. I mean, okay, maybe maybe it's because I'm in a you know, happy relationship that this is like, I, I to, to feel something anymore. I need this kind of <laughs> romance. I need this kind of story in my life, man. Because of like my Fuck my real sake. my real life, I'm like, it's okay. too solid, your real life. You need, you need some fucking- I need some spice. I need some but spice only, up only in there, in man. The imagination. John's gonna get to the point where the only thing that'll like get his socks rocking is just playing the most egregious area mm. games out there from the <laughs> mid 2000s. Cause all of them are like that. No, um, but I've, I've always liked, you know, car crash kind of romances just because it gives you an emotional response. Like you are, you know, like it's kind of like drama YouTube, you know, except no one's getting hurt. It's like, no, no one's actually doing something outrageous. It's all in a place of fantasy and sure. fiction. That makes um, sense. But again, <laughs> over the Christmas holidays, you could have watched literally anything. Bro, I had a great time, man. <laughs> I got fucking plastered and I watched White Album with Sydney and we fucking shouted at the screen oh my God. for what all the characters were doing. And it was a great fucking time. This um, is the weeb equivalent to watching sports, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this is the weeb equivalent to watching 90 Day Fiance <laughs> and being like, yo, they did what? No. She said what? <laughs> yo, she slept with him? Wait, wait, this bitch, this bitch came back and th she thinks that she can take over again? Ain't no way, oh no. It's, it's a great time. It sounds like horrible time. <laughs> um, um, one that I am wait, kind so how, of- How is this that you were defending Orimo? Yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah, so, Orimo, yeah. Oh, yeah, so yeah. Orimo is just that. The ending to Orimo is just one of like, seeing the reaction to the internet to the ending of Orimo was one of the most funnest period, like weekends I've had in my life. Just seeing the internet melt down. That was me with school days, bro. <laughs> that was me with school days. Wait, just what? Seeing, <laughs> yeah, we're seeing the ending to school days and then just Japanese internet just being like, what the fuck did I just fucking watch? See, with, with school days, I didn't, I, I guess I was like on forums and on social media less. I, I, was, on, I was on 2chan, bro. Oh, you're on 2chan? 2chan caught on flames <laughs> that day. What was the reaction like to <laughs> Dude, that? Everyone was like, wait, so it was this like, an April Fool's joke? Like, yeah, did this actually, is this the actual, like, no. That they're setting up for a final, final episode, right? And oh, yeah. No, it wasn't. And people got mad as fuck. But, yeah. that is, but it was really weird. It was so egregious that half the internet with a stable mind was like, this is the worst fucking ending I've ever seen. And then the other half of 2chan was like, that was an absolute masterpiece. I, I have a question about Orimo. Yes. I actually don't know what the fuck Orimo is about. All I know is that there's incest. <laughs> <laughs> That's only from you. I actually, I, <laughs> Wait, I, have I, you actually, never seen it? No, because it has incest. I don't want to watch that. Well, I mean, it's not the whole way through. 
<laughs> just a little bit. It's literally, okay, let me let me explain to you. Let me explain to you. I'm, oh, she's a little bit of incest. Just right, a little bit. All right, let me explain to you why the internet fucking broke down. Yes, in explain Oremo. to me. Uh, because people don't fucking believe me when I say this, but uh, it was a show that debated all of us. It like pulled like a reverse Uno card mm -hmm. because Oremo in season one came out and it was a show called uh, My Little Sister Can't Be This Cute. Right, yeah. and then everyone was memeing on it because, haha, it's uh, it's a fucking show called fucking My Little Sister Can't Be This Cute. Obvious incest bait, and then you actually watch season one, mm. and then people were like, "Wait, they're actually like acting like real brother and sister, like actual siblings," and it mm. turns out to be a like a pretty interesting look on otaku and like Akihabara culture in Japan. Okay, because this came out before there was this huge wave of. Hey, this is like weeb culture. Yeah, uh, this is a look into Akihabara 2000 culture. Two thousand and when was it? Eight, nine, something like that. Something, like, yeah. something around that time. And so it was a genuinely interesting and good show that people hadn't seen before. With what at the time felt like a more realistic depiction of a brother and sister mm. in anime. And then season two came out, and <laughs> uh, that it kind of went. Um, it turned into this kind of slice of life look into otaku culture into more of like a typical harem best mm. girl kind of like okay. show where every girl around him falls for the main character okay and Kuno, then Kuno Nickel got robbed bro yeah yeah exactly and then they released the last three episodes as an OVA where spoiler he chose his sister after the first season, where everyone's like, like, "No, this this ain't an incest, this ain't an incest did show." Like, did they like kiss or something? Or yeah, oh, yeah, dude, that's only the beginning. Yeah. What <laughs> they, yeah. they they got uh, married? Uh, that, that's that was the like end what? of the show. Yeah, uh, they got like fake married, um, and then they broke up. <laughs> because oh yeah, they were brother and sister because it was illegal. <laughs> yeah, and it was just. It's, Seeing the internet fucking go into flames because of the author just being like, haha, this I, this isn't actually an incest show. Just, just like, just joking. Actually, it was incest the entire time. You guys fell for my reverse bait. It it was just everyone broke down. The author is such a goddamn troll because then he is. After, because then afterwards he was just like, I'm gonna have to go in and meet Eremanga Sensei. <laughs> yeah, which the, is just round two. Yeah, the big difference between Orimo and Eremanga Sensei is Eremanga Sensei just didn't even pretend. And for the, <laughs> like, from episode one, it was like, just like genuinely yeah. there was a time when I thought Orimo for like season one. Genuinely, I think it's a good show. Mm. Uh, Eremanga Sensei, that was always that was always in the trash, yeah. man. That was always to, to, to give Oriimo the benefit of the doubt. It did, as Gan said, have a lot of interesting aspects to it that mm. was actually created a compelling story, even for a harem anime. Yeah, but my problem with it is that it didn't follow through with that. Yeah, till exactly. the end, and <laughs> and and the author was just like, nah, I'm gonna make some DJ so shit instead. What yeah. about this? Do you think maybe was so compelling to Didus? Because obviously gone, this is a big show favorite of yours. What about it? Do you think it'd be so compelling to be in the top nine? To I me, Oromo was the first show that I would say turned me into a, a weeb. weeb, I would say. Yeah. Before Oromo, okay, here's, 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 here's what I'm Harry. about. For what reason, gone? for what reason? Okay, here's the difference. Before, <laughs> before Oromo, right? I was, I was, I went through this kind of like pretentious critic, I, I have, Good taste, kind of like you know, yeah. you know. Everyone goes to that phase where they're like, "Oh, I went through the Mal Top 100. That's my taste. I like Legends of the Galactic Heroes. I like mm. all of the classics." Mm. You just described me in 2023. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then Orimo. And then I watch Orimo, and I'm like, "Huh." The first thing I was, I went into this ready to shit on it. And the first season, I was like, "Wait a minute, this is enjoyable," but this goes against mm. everything that I thought I enjoyed. Mm. And I think for, I think because. At the time, this was a very kind of like original take on it or a very new take on it. I think that was the first kind of like show for a lot of people uh, in my generation where and it was- and I, think, and I think people still gravitate to it even now because even though it came out in 2010, there have been so many Oriimo clones that have come out since then that have tried yeah. to like replicate that feeling of the show yeah. to not that much success because yeah, people in, just see right through it. In this day and age, Oreo Mode doesn't stand out as much anymore because there's like a million different shows that revolve mm. around. But it does stand out in a sense because it, I would say out of all of the Oremo clones and all the shows that kind of bit off Oremo, Oremo still does Oremo best. 
if that okay. makes sense. Yeah, because there was a point where it was genuinely, I think, a good show. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. And then every 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 show copied the second half of the Yoru Emoji yeah. show. Uh, welcome to the NHK. I hear a lot of people talk very positively about this. One of the shows that's been on my, like, I'm sure I'm going to watch this at some point, that's and I never have. a fantastic show. That is um, the anti Orimo. Mega, anything. mega depressing. Yeah, it, it also deals with otaku culture, except the fucking depressing side of shit. Well, yeah, shit. from my understanding, it just seems about like a show who guy, a guy who's struggling with um, oh, how to that's, that's be normal. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of, uh, Welcome to the NHK, I think is one of the best oh. anime that- uh, Joe didn't want one. Tackles, yeah, I didn't want one. It, welcome to, Welcome to the NHK is one of the best shows, in my opinion, that tackles the idea of loneliness in Japan. Okay. Uh, because, you know, as, as, as <laughs> so not- You're talking, so there's definitely gonna be on camera of Gantt <laughs> spelling or something. Right. But um, yeah, so like, uh, yeah, as, as Gantt said, like, you know, if, if the ideal weeb world is the main character of Orimo, yeah. then the total opposite of that is the main character of Welcome to the NHK. Yeah. Where like him being ostracized and him feeling lonely as a result of being an otaku and struggling to connect to people through his hobbies and his interests is mm. the entire philosophy of Welcome to the NHK. So but like a bit more of a real take as opposed very, to the very or- emo. This yeah. is this is just oh, uh, my take. Yeah. This is just if Bojack Horseman was a weeb. That is welcome to the <laughs> NHK. That's okay, you Kinda. sold me. Okay, you yeah, sold me. They, right, right, right. It's it kind of yeah, it deals with exactly is it the as same depressing thing. as Bojack. It's fucking depressing. It's, it's pretty depressing. Fuck, Bojack yeah. is pretty depressing because it's. I mean, you know about Hikikomori's, right? This is yeah. the, the main character is a Hikikomori, and he, the entire show is him struggling to fucking not become a Hikikomori and actually become a member of society. Hmm. Um, and that sounds like a great show. Fucking hard. He he just he, it's brutal. Like this was before, this came out before kind of like the whole mental health mm. um, awareness was more of a thing now in this mm. day and age. And it's so weird to see this coming out back in the day before that conversation was yeah. really as prevalent as it is now. Yeah, it's very poignant even now. Yeah, and it still hits just as hard. Mm. Um, and <laughs> you know. It's just it's just so funny just hearing the dichotomy between Orimo and this. You're like, yeah, yeah, he fucks his sister. Well, I feel, yeah. They get married. Yeah, yeah, it's not a bad thing. And you're like, so he's just trying to be a normal human being. Like, damn, that's tough. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Can, I can, I can you're really like, see. You're like, you're like, you're like, it's like, fuck your sister. Easy pill to swallow. <laughs> Functioning a member of society. <laughs> fuck, that's real, tough, dude. Real that's shit. tough. Real shit. It's like, why, why are we at the world where these two shows are described in this Dynas way? was really like double dipping into like yeah. the otaku world, like but at both ends of the spectrum <laughs> yeah. of the, like the weeb world with yeah. these two shows. Uh, I am surprised it was Yu Yu Hakusho though. I've never heard him talk about Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, yeah, I've never heard him talk about it either. Yeah. I if not- I knew, I would fucking geek out about Yu Yu Hakusho with him. But, so yeah. Uh, uh, solid choice, presumably. Very solid choice. It's It's, it's literally Shonen one, and Weeb. One and of the best 90 Shonen shows in my opinion. Yeah, I think the most important thing is that he also has Ranma on here as well. Also good. So he's just, you know, dipping in all generations. He's got good taste. Yeah. Except, except for Gundam except Seed. Except for Seed. I don't except know why. Except for Seed. What about Naruto? Uh, I mean, Naruto's just Naruto, isn't it? Uh, it's probably just Shonen number one that you first followed, I imagine. It's like whatever, whichever Shonen you follow first for the longest time. See, I don't know. Well, I'm looking at this and I'm like, Gundam. was the first anime he ever watched Seed or was it Naruto? I don't think, does the first matter that much? It does, because it kind of sets up. I, I watched Naruto first and I wouldn't put it as, it's and now you like Orimo, so. <laughs> well, I mean, there's a, a <laughs> nostalgia sells, can't yeah. for a reason. People, yeah. people tend to be very, even if they, it might not be their favorite, they tend to have a subconscious kind of, um, kind of tie mm. to the first real long show they watch, right? Because um, Princess Mononoke was definitely his first anime film, guaranteed. Princess well, Mononoke was, was my first anime which film, is like a gritty film. It's like a. I mean, it's one of my favorite Ghibli yeah. films. Yeah, it's one of my favorite as well. Still haven't watched it. What? No, You've not never not. seen Modern no. Okay? I, th- I think you would enjoy it actually. You would really like it. It's, really? it's, it's actually more, like adult. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's more adult than something like Spirited Away. Uh, Spirited Away is a bit more- Is you know, that trippy? Cause Spirited Away is just fucking weird oh, a lot of the time. Oh, okay, it's trippy. It's pretty oh. trippy. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty trippy. Oh. Trippy as shit. It's fantastic. Like, yeah. It's like, that's like, those kind of films, it's like leaning forward you have to watch. Cause you're like, oh shit, okay, let me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Modern okay, in some, some scenes, it's just like, oh fuck. Okay, Fair they enough. went there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then uh, of course, Hajime no Epo, considered I mean, as one of the best sports anime of all time. Oh, absolutely. It is amazing show. One day I will watch it. 
Yeah. But it is long. <laughs> it is long. It's just long. You have not watched Hajime no Ippo? No, it's long. If I have, I've lied. I have, <laughs> I've said that I've watched it, I've lied. Uh, you, would, you would love it, actually. Yeah. I, every, 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 any single time I see a clip from the show, it looks so goddamn cool. It's, it awesome. seems fun. Some of the most, I think Hajime no Ippo is some of the most hype you could get in anime, just period. Mm. Mm. Like, when I think about the hype anime, what comes up at the top? It's something like Gurren Lagan, I think, is the ceiling mm. of how hype. A, f- a certain show can be. Mm. Hajime no Yupo is like a very, very close second there for me in terms of how hype yeah, I felt watching I a scene uh, or what, just watching a piece of fiction. I've never had the, the adrenaline rush of some <laughs> of the scenes that have happened in Hajime no Yupo. Have you seen Yu Yu Hakusho? Uh, I've seen one episode. One episode? Yeah, I think we spoke about this on a, on a podcast right. uh, where I tried watching it yeah. and I, I, I just, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. It also starts off slow as well. It's so slow. Yeah. First episode, yeah. it's like, okay. He because, dies. because Togashi didn't know which direction he wanted to take yeah. the story. So it actually started off as like kind of like a, a slice of life show. Yeah. Until Togashi was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to pull a Dragon Ball route and just do an action show. Yeah. yeah. All right. But that was Didus's list, which I think uh, accurately represents everything I know about him. Yeah, this is very yeah. Didus. So I, I'm not going to call him out, him out for lying. Yeah. So that, that definitely screamed Good his job. name. Good job, right, Didus. Good job, Didus. Who is next? All right. This episode is sponsored by Vessi. Listen, if you've ever seen a picture of me or the other boys, you know damn well that we're always wearing Vessis every single time. Why? I'll let me tell you why, because they're extremely waterproof. They're lightweight comfort. They're easy on and off. And they're four-way stretch, so even fat feet like mine can get that damn shoe on. They got the everyday classic synthetic exterior, offers a sleek and sophisticated aesthetic, making it suitable for both casual and formal setting. I know Joey wore it to Gant's wedding. It's got a lightweight sole, ensuring stability and safety, and the soles don't mark, so it's also perfect for indoor environments. I quite often walk 10K in a day, and I wear these shoes all the time, and they are so comfortable. But of course, we can't not mention the Stormburst. High rebound dual density midsole offers a extra shielding against rocky roads, slush, and water. Uh, but if we get the full rubber outsole designed with the raised pattern, ensuring excellent grip on all slippery surfaces. And of course, we have the waterproof gloves, a classic and new favorite of mine, especially in these cold January days where I need some loving on my hands. And they were created to keep you dry no matter where your day takes you. So gear up for your urban adventures with Vessi. Go check out Vessi.com slash trash taste for shoes that masterfully combine waterproof protection with urban elegance. Start your journey with Vessi. Okay. All right, here's the next one. Jesus. Uh, um, Fuck Princess Mononoke is on here. Again. I immediately know who this is. <laughs> you do? Yeah. <laughs> I, I immediately know who Ain't this is. Ain't no way School Days is on here. I immediately no know. Way. I immediately know. I saw Arjuna. I saw School Days. I saw Made in Abyss. So don't tell me. Um, I don't know actually. <laughs> What's the bottom? What's the bottom right one? Uh, that's the that's Shinkai a, film. Uh, that's voice a, of the voice distant, of the distant stars. stars or something like that. Yeah, it's the first Shinkai Makoto short film. One of these is not like the other. <laughs> I know, I, I know. Why is Pokemon this? there? <laughs> because the Lugia movie's fucking the awesome. The Lugia movie does slap, but not as good as the, not as good as the Mewtwo one, dude. Come on. The, I mean, the first one, yeah. Yeah, the Mewtwo yeah. one goes hard. Yeah, the first movie is definitely the best one. But I, I, is this, is this Shindo L? I can't tell. No. Kevin? I think this is Kevin. It's Kevin. It's oh, Kevin. Okay. I look look at this. Everything aside from fucking school days has That's amazing. Right. Uh, <laughs> has amazing. I, I just wasn't sure if, if Kevin would put his own, his own show on there. <laughs> is, 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 this Kevin? is this Kevin? This Franklin? is Kevin, right? Yeah, okay, ah, of okay. course. Because literally every show other than School Days is considered to have some of the best soundtracks in all of anime. Yeah, it's it's the, it's definitely much. It's very much. Hey, this is Lugia? a composer's. Dude, the Lugia movie, the soundtrack is fucking insane. I don't remember it's, that. It's actually really good. I was this the Japanese version? Because in the English version, I can't even. I can't remember. Sometimes they would re do songs in English releases. Well, they did that I for the Digimon movie, right? The soundtrack I don't know. <laughs> yeah. didn't redo that, right? The soundtrack uh, probably didn't change. Oh no, in, in the Digimon movie- Digimon movie, uh, the soundtrack's completely what? different. What? Yeah, yeah, they, um, All Stars. All Star is a track in the Digimon movie. Why? They, they put like bowling for soup. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> less, less, less than Jake <laughs> yeah, as well. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it's actually, it's actually sick. That's officially in the Digimon movie. It, right? is, it, that, is, the most, it is the most late 90s, early 2000s soundtrack you'll ever hear. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say, I think they made an improvement. I think it's better. I, I, <laughs> I think the English soundtrack for the Digimon movie is better than the original. Yeah. 
like <laughs> you know, when, when you that know, bowling for you know, soup track you, comes on, bro. Yeah, there must be some. There must be some like uh, you know. Sometimes you want to used to watch a movie and you're like trying to parrot a movie as a kid, yeah. and then yeah. like the the Korean version comes up. You're like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I imagine maybe there's a, like a, a Japanese kid somewhere trying to watch Digimon. Yeah, and then he pulled up like the English version. He starts hearing All Stars like. Yeah, nanny caught it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Banger, this Holy name. shit. They had, uh, they had bare naked ladies as They're well. Bare naked ladies. <laughs> Dude, that soundtrack is good. It's um, such a good soundtrack. Okay, and look, look, let's let's break this down, all right? Obviously, Kevin's going to put him in an abyss because he made the fucking soundtrack for it. Yeah, but, um, then, this but, then, is... but then it could have been a three by three of his entire Kevin's greatest hits, but it's not, so. Well, I think, I think knowing Kevin- I think he, Kevin has favorites. He has I, favorites for yeah, sure. Yeah. Like Made in Abyss is probably his, his. I mean, it is his favorite, obviously, because it's on here. Yeah, um, yeah, but also, <laughs> Kevin just giving himself the gold medal, okay? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I need, all right, I need, you, yeah. you deserve it, Kevin? Uh, um, you know, Akira has an amazing soundtrack. Mononoke, Arjuna also has an amazing soundtrack. Um, what the fuck is Arjuna? So Arjuna was, uh, it was a, sh oh, when was it? Early nineties, I think, late eighties, something like that. Uh, was it a, um, was it a, uh, what's his name? Anna Hideaki show? I'm trying to remember. What? No, 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 <laughs> Arjuna <laughs> anime. <clears throat> 2001. Oh wow! Oh, it was actually wave. Oh, oh, that was an, that's the series, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a series. Going yeah. to have a movie, um, perhaps? Is it a movie? No, or? I think it's a series. I'm, well, the I'm one. Sure. Oh, really? Yeah, it's the director's cut. Yeah, Chikyu Shoujo Arjuna. Is it? Is it Arno? The 2001. What is that ad? 2001. What, 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 what is, is that <laughs> fucking ad? <laughs> what is Yo, that scroll ad? down. Scroll Yo. down. Scroll down for a second. <laughs> uh, no, it's not. Okay, anyway, I I've I haven't seen all of it. I've seen clips from it, but so it's, what it was, was the show uh, about. Well, let's let's look at the mail. <laughs> yep, because I actually don't remember. Juna Ariyoshi is an ordinary Japanese schoolgirl. <laughs> Connor's like I sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who possesses a childlike curiosity and a strong admiration towards nature. One day while on a trip with her boyfriend, Juna dies from a motorcycle accident. However, she's given a chance to live by an individual named Chris Hawken. Well, it's a very English name all of a sudden. He offers her powers that makes her the avatar of time. In exchange, she must fight to protect the earth from evil forces. So, okay, so it's like a it's like a early 2000s uh, like sci-fi. Uh, yeah. But I do know for a fact though, that I have, I have when I've talked to Kevin about like anime music, he does bring up Arjuna a lot. And he mm. says that that this series is the reason why he started making music and why he wanted to wow. make music for anime. Well, I hope it is because it's scored as 6.78 on my anime. <laughs> yeah, so you gotta have a good reason for liking that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he, but he, uh, according to Kevin, he's like, Arjuna has one of the best soundtracks that he's ever heard oh, uh, sure. in, in all of anime. Yeah, because I know, I, I think what immediately gave this away for me, just uh. immediately seeing this is, number one, a lot of these are films and films normally have, you know, a more, especially if you're a composer, mm. you know, you're allowed to have, I guess, sometimes it's more impactful to be able to score like music for certain, like for like a feature film. Mm. Whereas for a certain like anime series, you know, you kind of just have to, make certain tracks, not knowing what final scene they're gonna be used in. Yeah. Mm. And that just means a lot of film scores end up being very, very memorable and very, very impactful. Mm. Um, I have talked to him about uh, Terror in Resonance, Zanku no Terror as well. Oh, what an amazing and soundtrack. that is his favorite soundtrack of all time in terms of anime and mm. it is mine as well. It's one of my favorites I Actually, well. to, to be fair, it, was, it does say something cause I actually don't remember much about the show, but I do remember that the songs are always very compelling. It's, it's yeah. the Icelandic infused yeah, yeah. Uh, music, yeah. yeah. I do like the terrorism though, that was fun too. <laughs> <laughs> was fun. Nothing nothing matches terrorism more than Icelandic music. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do you know, I don't know if we, I don't know if we need to cut this, but do you know, do you know something uh, interesting about Terror and Resonance? What? So, okay, so the show is obviously about a group, a group of terrorists, right? Mm. Yeah. It, so when this was airing, the, I can't remember if it was their ninth or 11th episode got delayed. I do remember this happening, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Do you know what date it aired on? 9-11? Yes. Oh my <laughs> God. 
Really? Yeah. Holy shit. That was, I'm like, when was I have- why it got delayed or it pushed it back to de- like- I can't remember. I just remember like, it happening. Hold on guys, hold, hold, hold on. Hold on, you know what would be really funny? We had, we had such a funny moment. Someone in the boardroom was just like, we can make something really- We can send a message with this. We can make something really funny happen right now. Jesus. But uh, no, but to me, I still think that I still really, really fucking like Zanki no Terra. Yeah, it's a good show. Was it, yeah, I remember when it came out, everyone was talking about it. Mm. And it yeah. Was really, I mean, it just kind of disappeared after that year. I think a lot of people uh, were not happy with the plots and the characters, but um, I, I don't know, something about the feeling that show gives is there has been very, very few shows. And a lot of this is to do with the soundtrack, but a lot of this just a lot of individual scenes I, as well. I don't fully remember what the plot was, but I know that they were terrorists and they had a, a, a solid reason. <laughs> <In hopes so. laughs> That's it, that's all I remember. But I, I also distinctly remember being like, ah, okay, we, we did terrorism and uh, and now it's over. And now the show's over. It's like, okay, cool. Guys, terrorism is over. Guys, it's like, uh, I, remember, I, I remember watching it feeling like it should have been longer. It was what, 12 episodes, right? Yeah, it was 12 yeah. episodes. Because you know, nowadays we're starting to get some 24s popping mm. up and even longer. Right? Yeah. That was, I think when this came out, it was there was only 12 episode animes coming out. Does Kevin have any piece. reasons for why he put these on or? No, no I reasons. Mean, I, I, I mean, I, I can, guess it's self I can pretty much guess which with most no, of these. I just want to know why he put school days on there because I'd love to shake his hand. <laughs> I just. Because uh, let's just say Kevin, probably, didn't, was, put it, Kevin he, didn't put it on there for the fucking soundtrack. He was, probably, that. he was probably grinning, going like, oh, I could do a cheeky move here. <laughs> <laughs> put school days on my list. That's my Kevin. Is that your Kevin impression? <laughs> do a cheeky I'm move. school days on my list. <laughs> Sounds like a Brexit geezer. Go ahead. <laughs> I just <laughs> wake up, school days, watch Kevin, it. Kevin, you realize now that you are one of the most actual respected you know, staff members in the anime industry right now, especially in composers, you know, fan and industry alike. What the fuck is School Days putting, like doing on here, Kevin? I what mean, is it doing on here? I mean, my respect went up for him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well deserved, I would say. I don't want to hear- If fuck, I didn't already love you, I love you even more now. I don't want to be listening to fucking Made in Abyss having the existential crisis of my life. He definitely then, did this for me. And then <laughs> in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, School Days played a part in making this, you know? <laughs> You know, you're, you're talking like you're talking like anime creators have the most well-adjusted views <laughs> on most things. God, God, come on! <laughs> I mean, what I am also surprised about is him putting uh, the voice of the distant star. Yeah, as, what the fuck, as, Kevin? As, as, like, what is this thing? So this was Makoto Shinkai. This is Shinkai ah. Makoto's first directorial debut. It was a what was it like? A, it was a short film. I think it was like 20, 30 minutes or something. Uh, kind of mecha, but also including a lot of like the Shinkaiisms of like you know, lots of emotional scenes and stuff like that. It does have a good soundtrack, to be fair. Does it? I don't. I don't I, remember. I, it I remember the. I remember the soundtrack being pretty good, but the problem is, is that I barely remember the plot because because it was shit. Because it was not very good. Because. <laughs> Mako Shinkai didn't learn how to do plots until your name. Yeah. Uh, is he the director who keeps making the same movie? Or yeah. is that, okay. Weathering okay. with you, five okay. centimeters per second. Okay, well, I mean, that's a very generalization of what I said, but that's, yeah. Yeah. It's, generally it's the makes the, he generally makes very similar things. Yeah, yeah no, I, cause I remember- You're not gonna believe it. His next film is a romance. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. I, 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 I could figure that one out. Well, it's, he does like different variations, but I remember before <laughs> your name. <Yeah. laughs> Different oh, variations. It's almost more insulting, I think, you say. I, yeah, he does the- He does the same thing. He, he changes it up sometimes. His, his new, I actually watched his newest film over Christmas and it was like- Oh, the the, the, the Suzume. Suzume. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was kind of felt like Shinkai was like, I'm going to try making a Ghibli film. Right. Oh. That's that's what it felt like. Yeah. And then there was romance in there. And, uh, <laughs> that, that was the part that actually was the weirdest part. Well, no, part because before it. he did Mirai, which was another one that- No, no, no that's uh, that's uh, the other director. Oh, that's Mamoru Hosoda. Hosoda. Sorry, yeah. my bad. But before that he did, what's the other Radwimp's fucking thing? Weathering With You. Weathering With You, yeah. I liked Weathering With You. Yeah, a lot of people like that, that yeah. movie. I, I preferred it over your name. Oh, I haven't. I, haven't I did it. not. Yeah, um, but you're fucking, you have a boner for your name, so. I just think that he, like, here's the thing um, about Shinkai, because I am a big fan of Shinkai, mm. and I'm very familiar with, I've watched everything that he's put out. Mm. Um, th something that was always strong in his works pre your name mm. was that he always had a, he always, I could always tell the idea and the emotions and the feeling that he wanted to 
put across in his films. Yeah. yeah, Like that was always something that really resonated with me no matter what Shinkai did, including Voice of a Distant Star as well. Um, and the thing that I always thought he was missing was he would always have this idea or emotion that would resonate with me, but the plot would always be fucking boring. You know, it would well, always- Yeah, in my, in my opinion, in my opinion, it was more like, you know, cause my favorite Shinkai film is five centimeters per second, but not, because I think it has like a really good plot. It's more so the fact that like, Shink as you said, like Shinkai's movies a lot of the times were not like a singular story that was being mm. told. It was kind of just like a collection of emotions, just like kind of stitched together. Yeah, I mean, you know, five centimeters per second. I think it's a beautiful idea for a story. Yeah, but there's no story. What, what, what's the story? There's no story. <laughs> what is what is the compelling like plot line of yeah. that, you know? And why is it called five centimeters per second? Cause that's it's how this, fast the, it felt the story was no. going. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, it's called five centimeters per second because that's the speed at which a cherry blossom petal falls. <laughs> That's legitimately why it's called five <laughs> centimeters per second. Cause the, the, the cherry blossom falling motif right. is yeah. just a lot in that movie. Yeah, but I, I feel like he discovered, like he he discovered something with your name where he took all of these, some of these ideas and emotions and he weaved it into what I thought was a pretty compelling plot line. Mm. And I thought that was the only piece of the puzzle he was missing. Sure. And then he found that with your name. And then he was like, I don't know how to do something else other than some kind of like the same kind of ideas mm. as that. Um, so like one thing I respect about Suzume is that he tried something new. It's mm. it's definitely different from Weathering With You. That's good. Um, he, I would have liked him more if it actually did not have any romance in it, <laughs> funnily enough. You're asking <laughs> Shinkai to not do romance. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that was the least interesting part of that plot. Uh, it's like asking light novel authors to not do incest. <laughs> not gonna happen. <laughs> well, fu well, funnily enough, I also thought the romance part, you guys have seen your name, right? Yeah. I also no. thought, I also thought the- No. You never seen your name? No. I, I, I've, had, I've had this struggle, honestly, with watching uh, anything romance related in anime. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't have the problem with normal, uh, like Western media. I, right. I, I just find, I don't know what it is about Japanese- so the Japanese interpretation. Ja Japanese of interpretation of romance stories that mm. I just don't connect with. Really? A lot of them oh. I just don't care about. I'm, I'm completely the opposite. Yes, I, yes. I, I, really? see, uh -huh. I see a Western romance story and I'm like, you know, yeah. it's just like- Except it's the notebook, notebook is banger. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's my favorite. It's movie, it's Unironically, movie. it is my favorite Western <laughs> romance film. <laughs> like all these women fucking cry about like, oh, Titanic is the most fucking blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, it's just well, a that, fucking ship scene. Well, that kind, of, that kind of romance, I don't really fucking care about much no. either. That's notebook very, was that's actually- very, that's, like no, very, that's very like angelical Christian interpretation of romance. I, that, yeah, yeah. I don't everything know is love at first if this sight. is a hot take, but the notebook gave me the feeling <laughs> of a Japanese interpreted romance story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because okay, in, in the sense that it's like, if, if the notebook ever got an anime adaptation, I could totally see Shinkai doing it. Because it gives that I, it gives that same feeling of like the notebook having this like it has you know unlike a lot of Shinkai films it does mm. have this coherent story mm. but there's so many different emotional points that feel very Shinkai in the way that like how the characters change and develop and stuff like that I mean like for one it's just a really solidly written story in my opinion mm. um, mm -hmm. I think the only reason why it's had this stigma is because it's the fucking relationship tester movie that yeah. everyone talks about right but when I actually finally sat down and watched it with Aki I was like wow that was actually a fucking beautiful movie I, I cried in the notebook bro like I think I, I watched the notebook too I, it was a great it was a great back. film um I liked and it. like I, I too watched it and it was I don't remember much about it. It wasn't yeah, Japanese, I, I, I so I didn't I, feel anything. I I, you know, Chang Tatum was good in it. Sorry? Yeah. Chang Tatum was good in it. Chang Tatum? Isn't it Chang Tatum? <laughs> it's not Chang Tatum. No. Wait, who is it in the it's, it's not Ryan Gosling. It's-, it's uh, Wait, was there another movie around that time with, Ch with Chang Tatum? That I don't remember. <laughs> Wait, it was Ryan Gosling, wasn't it? Was it Ryan Gosling? Was it Ryan Gosling? I, 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 just, I just kind it's of like- It's that guy. <laughs> I just kind of like- What's the guy? Yeah, it's Ryan Gosling. Oh okay. shit. Gosling. Fuck, there must have been another, I got, cause I, I remember I was dating this girl and she forced me to watch like three of these films and I they all blended into that one of my That had Channing head. Tatum in it? Well, at that time, I 21 swear- 21 Jump Street? No, no, I swear there's a movie. Cause before 21 Jump, before Channing Tatum was a comedy actor, he was doing romance only. Was he? Do you remember this? No. I remember this. Yeah, Channing Tatum was the romance guy. I think yeah. I found out about Channing Tatum through 21 Jump Street. That, that, that was when he started to like- Are you serious? Yeah. That was when he started to like pivot. But before yeah, that's that, when he was, wanted to like He was like the image. American like Sweet romance hearts. go to yeah. heart flow. Really? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow, I did not know that. Um, that's why he did a bunch of weird films to try and kind of get out of that oh. notion. Um, what, what? 
American or what Western romance That's, stories do you I, like? And I, the, I, when I said this out loud, and I know that we were talking about it, I was trying to think in my head because I knew you were going to ask me this. And I'm trying to think of a piece of media that I think did romance really well. Oh, um, what's the fucking Jim Carrey one? Uh, Eternal Spotless Mind. It's Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind. That's yeah. a romance, technically. I, I love, and I, I, I swear, I feel like I, I haven't seen this ever in a, in a and maybe that you can correct me because mm. I'd love to be wrong about this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's rarely ever stories about romance going horribly wrong. That's uh, why I like my fucking romances, man. <laughs> no, uh, yours doesn't go horribly wrong. No, I, want, I, think I, what, I, mean, I think what Connor's talking like, about I mean like is that like, it seems like it's going in the right direction and then it ends up going horribly wrong because the protagonist As, is as it so right? does in life. Yeah. What, what, are you, what yours, are you talking about? Your one is- What are you talking you are, about? Yours, oh, oops, your, no, I stuck my dick in my little yeah, sister. Your one is- <laughs> your, your, one, four. Your, one, your one goes wrong from minute one. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't go wrong from I, minute I, one. Okay, okay this, is, this, is, this is a horrible example, right? Yeah. I really fucking love how they deal with romance and peep show. <laughs> <laughs> where this Are you fuck fucking serious? Where it's this fucking mess of a, a comp, because because romance is super messy in real that's life. One, sure. That's one step away from the fucking Dennis system, yeah, that's man. So, that's so fucked up. But there's, <laughs> I, I love the whole arc with like Mark getting married in the, because in this peep show, he gets married to this woman that he doesn't really know if he wants to get married to, but he just thinks it's the right thing to do. Sure. And then yeah. he realizes it's a fucking horrible idea and he didn't want to get married. Yeah. And I kind of love that they did a story that like in, in Western media, we can have a bunch of these stories about stuff like that. I feel like in anime, there would never be a show like that. There would never be a show where a guy gets married, turns out he doesn't like his wife and, it, but, and, and they would commit to it in a way that would actually make you think, hold on, these guys are horrible people. Uh, mm. It would make you think like, oh, his wife is a, a demon Lord. That's why he doesn't like her. <laughs> it's like nothing, we, they can never make an like just unlikable characters that we can figure out that we don't like. It's like, hey, this is a character you shouldn't like. I think and it's because I think it's because it just hits too close to home for a lot of Japanese right. people. That's, that's what I want. <laughs> but Japanese don't want that. How all right, many, all right, how all many right. Japanese people, right, are in fucking I'm, loveless I'm, marriages? Why can't we get a, a fucking anime well, about a loveless that's marriage? Why, I would love that's that. That's why shows I'm, like Agretzko was so not popular in Japan yeah, because it's too close to home and Japanese people don't want to watch anime for that isn't that crazy reason. that it was about fucking animals? <laughs> yeah, then, but they were still like, well, this is too real. But they were still, <laughs> but they were still like, yo, Haida is totally me, dog. This guy said he doesn't my work. I don't. Yeah. I, okay. No, no, uh, no. I'm uh, based on what you said, Con. I'm gonna say something fucking outrageous. Okay. All right. Fucking, you want escapism? No. Fucking rent a girlfriend, man. That is almost exactly without the marriage part, but with the yeah, everyone but, being assholes. Yeah, but here's where you're gonna lose him. They're all high schools. Well, okay, no, they, university well, students. Actually, well, they're all university students. But it's the suspension of disbelief mm -hmm. is to a degree where I'm like, ah, I think this is just, this is silly. But I think if there was, if it was grounded in some, some reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, how come every single goddamn love triangle in an anime has to be so corny and stupid? Why can't it be an actual love triangle? Like, what do you mean? Well, they have to actually like, how, the, the, they would have to actually explore the mechanics of what it would actually mean to have to juggle this realistic love triangle and that's how why, fucked up it would be. That's why Golden Time is one of my favorite romances because yeah. it did exactly that in my opinion. That's probably the most, realistic depiction of a yeah. love triangle. Um, not they, also, counting. they also did that in Ichigo 100%. I, mean, well. I, I think the problem is that also a lot of the times, if if you were to really depict an actual love triangle, you probably wouldn't like the protagonist much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, exactly. And then you end up with school days. Yeah, so how do you how do you <laughs> juggle that? But I feel like that could be like, and why Golden Time is so compelling mm -hmm. because it, it tries to do something different and doesn't play the safe route of, in the romance, here, here's what's going to happen. Here's the two people are going to get mm. together. It's all going to be yeah. very happy. Mm. Oh, maybe you know. And and my 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 pet peeve is that they're like this romance is tough. Uh, or how, how do we how do we throw some spice into this romance and make it it, it, it kind of difficult? Yeah. I don't know. Fucking kill that kid or kill someone else around them that makes them have to be sad, as opposed to having some actual problems stem from their romance. Like mm. let's make the problem come from an out like an outward source, not not something that they're having to deal with. Yeah. And I feel like that's a much more mature way of approaching romance that we are a, a little more inclined to exploring in a Western way, but that's, I, I don't think we do as like a good job either. Uh, but I feel like we just do not get this flat out at all in anime. And that's kind of the reason why I'm not too huge into anime. Yeah, I, th I uh, think- Romance anime. Yeah, I, th I think just in general, 
everything you described. I don't want everything to be depressing, by the way. I'm just yeah. saying I would like to be more mature. <laughs> I actually yeah. uh, give me give me more depressing romance stories. I, I, um, yeah, I think I think the reason for it works for me in anime is because there is that suspension of disbelief. Mm. Uh, because I think I have the, a lot of the same problems that you have with romance. Yeah. Except when I see real actors, I'm like, this isn't this ain't real. This this is like what? some. <laughs> no, no. When when I see real <laughs> actors, uh, that ev- brings it out. Uh, brings me out of the story even more because no. because with anime it's like a t- animated medium something in my brain just mm. just thinks okay you have a higher suspension of disbelief just because you know that this is kind of like a fantasy cartoon world but when mm. i see real actors and what? something doesn't replicate real life how i know it that actually makes the intricacies of what doesn't work that's crazy I, come out I, even more for me i feel the opposite because i feel like when I'm watching a movie and there's some really talented actors uh, and just seeing all the little body language that they're doing to really sell this emotion or what they're thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's just something that we just, you just cannot replicate in anime because you can't have all these tiny little body movements. They all have to be deliberate. Whereas an actor can kind of put in these little, maybe an arm movement, maybe a tongue in the, like literally like, mm, I don't know, you know, like little really tiny little body movements yeah. that we just can't express in anime. I- that can really sell an emotion or a scene or doubt Well, I I would go the opposite way where, you know, animation is a different form where Mm -hmm. you can express a certain idea or a certain motion in a different way than any real actor can. You know, you can draw expressions, you can exaggerate movement and emotions without making it feel like it's out of place Mm. just because it takes place in a world of cartoons. So it's- I think think it totally, for me, it's, I'm kind of in between you guys where for me, it just totally depends on the actual story that Mm. is taking place. I think some Mm. stories works better in animation. Yeah, absolutely. Some stories work better in live action and I don't really have a preference. I mean, that's why I generally prefer live action stuff for romance, just because Mm. I find that those very slight body movements really sell romance. Mm. You know, the the little things that actors can do. I I, I had that feeling when I watched the anime version of I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, and then I watched the live action version of it. I way prefer the live action version of it Mm. because of what you said. Yeah, you can add a lot more to it. Yeah, there's there's, like the feeling of the emotion was just so much more potent with real people. As opposed to the anime. But well, there are some stories that I would absolutely want more in anime than- I, Oh, totally. You know, um, just how it goes. Hmm. Um, Interesting. Yeah. Um, um, other than that though, I mean, Ghost in the Shell, Akira, amazing soundtracks, totally get it. Yeah. Uh, the Lugia movie, I guess that's just nostalgia for Kevin. <laughs> um, he is yeah. a Pokemon it was Entei was the third one, right? Uh, Entei was the third Entei one. Was the third that one, one was yeah. pretty good, I remember not being as <laughs> solid as the other two. But I know a lot of people love the Entei movie. Yeah, and the Celebi movie as well. That one was and then there's good. the Unknown yeah. movie. The Unknown movie? Wasn't there a movie about the unknowns? Pokemon? Am I crazy? I don't know. I haven't seen all Is of them. a movie? I swear there's a movie about the unknowns. And then fucking... I think the last... Lucario Pokemon. got his own movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think the last one I actually remember watching was... Oh, maybe it was. Oh, yeah. It might have been the oh, third one, actually. Oh, must have been the third one, yeah. The Unknown, because I think the Unknowns played a huge part in that movie. The last one I watched was the Celebi movie. That was a good movie too. That was great. And then there was, uh, was there a Latios and Latias one? Yeah. Fuck me, bro. They printed money. Printed money. Hey, man. Good on <laughs> All right. Well, solid yeah. list from right. Kevin, though, solid overall. Solid list from Kevin. Uh, definitely, uh, this is your composer's favorite anime kind of list. Uh, yeah. Is that Ghost in the Shell, the movie? It is yeah, it's, okay, it is yeah. the movie. I've, I haven't Which, watched the movie, only the series. That's good. It's, uh, it's not- it doesn't matter. Everything about Ghost in the Shell, no matter what, except for maybe the live action movie, everything slaps pretty hard. Okay. Oh yeah. What yeah. about the 2045, the new one? Oh, I don't. I, we don't talk. Yeah, we don't talk about. <laughs> okay, one. I forgot about that one. The backflipping up the stairs. Yeah, is still my favorite. If it's a Ghost in the Shell like anime, anime. Yeah, then, like an actual yeah. anime. Yeah. Still my favorite scene ever when the guy gets all his money from getting the one yens from bank transactions. <laughs> still oh, yeah. my favorite scene ever. Yeah. <laughs> so good. All right. All right. Nice good job, Kevin. Good job. All right. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we always get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Mm. And maybe you finally organized one part of your space and you want to tackle another. Or maybe you're just taking your supplements every morning and now you want to actually eat breakfast too. Mm -hmm. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. Boys, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist anytime for no additional charge. I mean, honestly, I think more guys, especially guys in our age group and position, mm. uh, we 
could benefit a lot by just being able to talk to someone because yeah. In my own personal experience, not a lot of guys or not enough guys talk about themselves and what we're mm. feeling enough. I agree. Sometimes it's out of embarrassment. Sometimes you just don't have the right friends to open up to, um, which is why, you know, in my personal experience, I started off with some talk therapy that didn't necessarily mean anything was wrong or I needed to fix anything about mm. myself. Mm. I think therapy has a bad kind of like image of that, mm. but it did help me a lot to understand myself. So celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash trash to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash trash. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Back to the episode. Okay, so we have our next three by three up <laughs> and I can already tell who this is. Wait, really? I, I, I'm i I'm pretty confident. Okay. I'm pretty damn confident. So we got Hunter Hunter 2011, I assume. Uh -huh. Yu-Gi-Oh, Dragon Ball Z, Code Geass, Attack on Titan, Jesus of Kaisen, Death Note, Vinland Saga. What's that last one? Code Geass. Oh, it's Code. Why did yeah, they pick I that think picture? That's yeah. No, Code Geass is up there. So what's that one? That is. What is that? What's the last one? That is Code Geass. <laughs> that looks like Lelouch and that looks like the Zero Mask. I don't know what that is. Oh, Cashern Sins? Cashern. Oh my God, I have no that. What's so Cashern? Huh? The fuck is Cashern? Uh, Cash and Sins is the beta code. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. Um, is this Charlie's I'm list? pretty confident it's yeah, Charlie's it's one. Gotta, this yeah. is the most uh, uh, male anime fan oh. generic list ever. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that, makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Not a single romance or, or slice Not, of life everything, to be seen. Not a single sports anime. Everything is action. Manly stuff, yeah. I fucking men. I it. men, 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 boys, boys, boys. boys. This, <laughs> this is, is the is boys. This, is this Charlie's? Club. Yeah, this yeah. Is <laughs> gotta be. What's, gotta what's be. the bottom right one? Oh, it is Cash yeah. and Sins. Wow, he watched Cash and Sins. What the yeah. fuck is Cash and Sins? I don't even know what this is. It did it come out before or after? I, th I can't remember. It's it it, before, right? It is an action anime. That's all what I really is, know about what, it. What I, I didn't watch it. I didn't actually watch what? it. I haven't watched it in years. Um. Uh, I think it might be kind of like- It's a mecha, I'm pretty it's sure. It's a 7.5 on Mal. That is literally the most seven, like that means it's <laughs> like a five out of 10. <laughs> but one thing that I, I am guessing why Charlie put this on is that it just has a very badass art style and a very badass visual kind of like identity. That is true. Uh, which, you know, I know Charlie would be a big fan of. Does Charlie have a reason for putting cash on scenes in? No. Hmm. All right. Well, I mean, okay. Let's let's go. Let's yeah. go through this. Even though this screams, <laughs> this already screams. Code everything. Yes makes sense because he said on Trash Taste that that's his favorite anime of all time. Oh, that's valid. Which is I, valid. I can see why yeah. someone would be their yeah. favorite. I know he went through a phase of collecting Yu-Gi-Oh cards as yep. well. Yep. So yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh is just great. I just love the memes. I just love the. I don't know. The Yu-Gi-Oh fandom seems like they have a good time. It's so quotable as well. It's such a great show. <laughs> you're a, well, the dub is great. You're a, what, the dub you're, is so. You're good. a third-rate duelist. No, you're a fourth-rate duelist with a th third-rate deck or something. <laughs> See, the problem with the dub is that I don't know. I'd like I literally can't tell which scenes are from the original dub and which scenes are from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. I think I think that one I just quoted is from the abridged, actually. <laughs> so I think the, no, it should have been me. I think that's from the I think that's bridge. from the dub. <laughs> that's from the original. Is it? Oh, no, no, no. Fuck. It should have been I me, not know. him. I that's from the original anymore. dub. I don't fucking know anymore, But dude. I keep quoting like- Well, the abridged- My deck has no pathetic cards, Yugi, which I think is from Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged. <laughs> <laughs> if I- And then I, obviously I, the fucking Pot of Greed meme is oh, all yeah. from the- the, that's the from, fucking that's the abridged. Yeah, yeah, that's from abridged. Like, which one? Pot of Greed. They're like, what does Pot of Greed do? And like, no one ever- No one knows. No one knows what Pot of Greed does. Oh no, I, I think that just became a meme because every time- Pot of Greed came on. Pot of Greed came on, they would always explain the power, even though it was the most simple card you could possibly pull from the deck. Now, wasn't it like, it was like <laughs> that you explain how Pot of Greed works by using Pot of Greed or something? Yeah. yeah. And, then really I, and then I summon another Pot of Greed. I, I, I unfortunately <laughs> have no idea which memes, yeah, like you said, come from the abridged yeah. and which come from the actual dub. I have have, you, so have you noticed Pot of Greed is basically just every ugly bastard fucking design you've yep. seen from Hentai? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is kind of confusing <laughs> yeah. and kind of concerning. Yeah, look, look at this shit, it's, man. It's my favorite fucking card, bro. Yeah. Pot Can we agree green. that the- Look at Look that. At, it's that smile, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I saw it and got turned on and thought, hold on now. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, we, actually, we can I put have this... an actual pot of green. That's actually kind oh, of badass. That's, that's I really, want that. really sick. I, 
I I think the dual disc is probably the, you just the draw hardest, two cards, right? Yeah. The hardest piece of equipment in all of all time. It goes so hard. The what? The sorry? dual disc. Oh, the, the fucking the, coolest yeah. piece of uh, anime merchandise. Every that you can kid, own. Yeah. every kid That's wanted. That's so one. iconic having yeah. one. I, I had one as a kid. You did? Yeah, oh, I, I couldn't. I couldn't get my parents to buy me one. I wanted yeah. one of these so bad when I was a kid. Holy! It fuck. was so sick, but I remember it was so annoying having to keep your arm like <laughs> up all the time while you're playing. Yeah, but it, it felt so fucking badass that you didn't even mind. I, what a cool piece of equipment that is! The coolest card game, kind of like piece of so equipment sick. that has ever that's, come out. That's crazy that someone's making a video being like, I got a real dual disc. Like, like it's some kind of ancient artifact. <laughs> Whereas I just had one as a kid and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> oh, what I loved so was the little cool. section uh, above the where you, yeah, where you could like put your actual deck inside of it and you could pull it out. Was, yeah, and there's the graveyard is at the bottom and then yeah. your life points were yeah. there. It was oh, such yeah. a cool, so, such a fucking cool piece of equipment. What a fucking genius. God, I design. wish that Yu-Gi-Oh came out when nerd culture was a bit more, um, accepted because yeah, dual disc, unironically, one of the coolest things ever. I would love to see what a high, like high spec one. build. I've already so, an, an actual, like, buy one. An actual, an actual high spec custom build of a dual disc would look like. Cause obviously this looks like, you know, can we typical all buy kids one toy. and play Yu-Gi-Oh with it? Sure. I, I really want to I've never that. played Yu-Gi-Oh before. I recently, oh, you want? You, I've never played Yu-Gi-Oh before. I, I've played Yu-Gi-Oh a few times in my in my life, but I've recently played the Forbidden Memories PS1 game. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which came out before the official rules of Yu-Gi-Oh mm. were established. And yeah. uh, I played it because there's a, there's, they, it's like the craziest speed run of all time. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the, the game is fucked. It's they also made, RNG. Yeah, they right? made the game impossible. It's yeah. so yeah. fucking hard. Um, Isn't like the 100% the record is like 70 something hours or something. Yeah, because you have to get like 700 cards and some of the cards, oh, actually a lot of the cards have 0 0.1 drop rates. Yeah. yeah. So you have to just grind. Yeah. And it's like Konami was just hated kids. <laughs> but that was a fun game. What and it made me, made me really want to play more Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, totally. I, thought, I just love yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, it's so cool. The monster designs are just so cool. So cool. Yeah. I mean, of course, Attack on Titan is on there as well. Yeah. Uh, I saw his video where he did very much enjoy the ending. Uh, on the same, I, I mean, I think Charlie puts it on the same level as Code Geass now, just as a whole, Damn. as right. his like favorite anime. Uh, DBZ, he obviously grew up with, I assume. Yes. Mm. Same with like uh, Death Note, I would assume. Vinland Saga, yeah, I mean, who fucking doesn't like, it? like Hunter x Hunter, Vinland Saga, like who doesn't like it? Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, I'm not surprised. Not surprised. I think it's, if you're watching Jujutsu Kaisen right now, well, I guess- it's With season when, two? Well, when this is, when this is out, it's finished airing, but mm, there's yeah. like two weeks, two episodes left before. Mm. It's so hard not to think that it's like uh, fucking amazing. I just all like, it's the only anime I really want to keep watching every week. It's like the latest Shibuya arc has just been that modern yeah. shonen arc classic, insane. in my opinion. Insane. It's insane. People are going to be talking about this arc for generations to come. So that doesn't surprise me, but yeah. It's this is this is it. This is the boys only club. You know, this is sometimes my I don't know if your guys' Twitter feed has been just taken over by Shonen fans recently. I think it's because Jujutsu uh, Kaisen. Thankfully is, not. Is it not? No. Every day I log onto my Twitter and someone is making a certain thread of like, oh, here are some manga panels that go hard. Oh, oh I've seen those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> manga panels that go hard on and shit like that. And it's the same fucking 10 shows. It's it's like- yep. <laughs> They might throw in Dun every now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, there was this like out of nowhere incest scene in Jujutsu Kaisen recently and that kind of blew up. <laughs> and I, I remember when I watched it, I was like, Huh? <laughs> <laughs> they kept that in? They kept that in? Yeah, there was just a random incest part that kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> it was really weird. It literally came out of nowhere. God, not they even just like- They were just like- Yeah, and, and, it, and it, it was really funny watching Twitter react because they were like, it was like a bunch of like all the, because there was this one tweet that blew up that was like, ain't no way they put this in the anime. And mm, it was just yeah. showing off incest, not, but, but even more concerning incest with like a really older, Sister and a very young brother. Oh, switching and they're up, actually I see. and they're actually blood related. And they're blood well. related. Oh. They're, they're, it's, it's none of and this they're... like step sibling bullshit. They are fully committing. And it was just out of nowhere <laughs> in the middle of like the most hyped shit ever. And they were like incest. You're like fucking what? Jesus Christ! And then all the replies were like Vegeta with like bloodshot eyes, like <laughs> screaming, being like, "Why is she so bad though?" <laughs> 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 And it's like, what is wrong with Twitter? 
<laughs> it was like literally like Vegeta coughing up blood being like, I don't care though, I would. <laughs> and it's like, what is wrong with Twitter? Like, what have we, what have we done? What have we done to these oh, people? It's, it's so amazing how like DBZ is just one of those shows where every non DBZ anime fan just loves to clown on that community, but Fuck me, they make they still make some of the best goddamn memes and reaction images. Honestly, of like after Twitter. Modern Shonen, I'm like maybe maybe we were too maybe we were too harsh on DBZ fans. Well, I think it's because Goku and Vegeta have such rec like they're so recognizable, which lends to their memeability. Mm. In the same I, I, way that like Mario and Sonic are often memed because they're sure. so widely yeah. recognized. Yeah, totally. yeah. I'm just I'm just liking the fact that there are more anime screenshots that are just becoming widespread memes mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, the one I've seen recently that's been spread around is the one where like Gon's about to go for the attack yeah. and Killua just like got his hand on the shoulder, <laughs> which is like normally used when someone's like overshooting a tweet or someone's like <laughs> someone's like saying something that might've been going a little bit too far and someone just replies that. And I'm that's like, so I'm like, that's so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's not much else to say about this one. Good taste, Charlie. I mean, Charlie, this is just good taste. We know this is good taste. It's just and like your, your bro comes to you who is like, hey, I want to get into anime. Welcome to the starter pack. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, let's look at the Moving next one. Moving on. Oh shit. Okay. Ooh, wow. All right. So we have Terran Resonance, uh, Afro Samurai, uh, Helsing, oh, Death yeah. Note, One Outs. What's the left? On the, that looks familiar. Uh, there's there's one thing that stands out to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my like god! I just saw it. Thumb. Uh, uh, Prince we got of tennis, Kok Koku, and we got handshakers, handshakers in the bottom right, which is Why? one of the considered Why? one of the worst animes of. It's like, one of the it's, worst it's shows ever made. Awful. Is that handshakers or is that Wiz? I no, can't it's tell. handshakers. This has to be Shindo Al, right? You reckon? <sighs> I don't know if it is. I really, you know, I love Shindo and I really hope he doesn't say handshakes. Oh wait, no, no, I think no, it might wait, be, Mudan. I think it might be Mudan's. You know why? Cause Mudan told me he loved handshakers one time. What? Yeah, and I was like, wait, isn't that like the worst anime of the year when it came out? Yeah. Like, yeah, so this is definitely Mudan. I fuck with one outs though. One outs is- One outs is great. Sick, I'd, sick uh, is this Is this Mudan? Oh my God, Mudan, why the fuck would you put I, handshakers on there? I, I saw handshakers and I was like, I. It's either Shindoel or Mudan, and I'm leaning more towards Mudan, just because um, from a visual standpoint, like from a purely visual standpoint, it's pretty impressive how- Shout out to Go Hands. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive how bad something can be on a, from a visual standpoint. It's, it's, not like it's, it's not like it's bad, um, and nobody, because nobody's mm. trying. Someone is trying. The team is trying really hard to make something look visually interesting. Yeah, the team said, "How many texts? Yeah, do you didn't, want? didn't it the director fucking, said yes? Didn't it look shit? It, yeah. They just added way too many different textures. It was, so oh. it just yeah. looks horrendous. They they added way too many textures, and I think at that point they discovered like. Uh, dynamic camera movement, and they tried using that shit for everything. Uh, it's it's like the equivalent uh, uh, of you know when you're making your first PowerPoint presentation and yeah. you learn about the star wipe transition, and yeah. you use that for every single slide. That's what that's it's, what it felt like the team like was doing. It's like you do that with every single slide, and all the text is in word art. That's that's <laughs> that's what it's like. Rainbow font word art. Yeah. So so what are the what's the the three in the bottom left corner. What are those three? The one with the orb. That's print, oh, the, the orb one? Yeah, what's that one? Hinamatsuri. Too. That is Hinamatsuri and that oh. is a fucking great so series. I never Hi Hinamatsuri that. and then Prince of Tennis. Prince of Tennis, Prince of tennis. Prince of tennis. Um, Kokoku. Kokoku. I what's, don't what's, know much about Kokoku. Um, I would be very, very That's interesting. All I know is that the opening is one of my favorite openings. Yabi. From that, uh, from that year, yeah. in fact, it's an absolute banger opening. Watched the first four episodes and I don't remember anything about it. Same. What all. was that show about? Some. T it was a time travel thing, uh, right? Was it time travel? I'm not Shit, sure. I don't even remember. I also maybe watched like the first two or three episodes and then uh, didn't Prince pick it of up. Janice. That's Prince, surprising. That's a classic. I thought that was. I've, I haven't met anyone who said that's their favorite sports anime. You'd be surprised. A lot of people in Japan. I know, I know in Japan it's very popular. Yeah, it's huge. But in the Western- It's one of my, I would say like guilty pleasure sports anime because the, the one thing that Prince of Tennis and a lot of sports anime does that I personally don't really like is the whole like 
bullshit power up. I things. fucking love that in sports anime. Yeah, but the, but shows like Prince of Tennis do it in a way where it's just fucking. Yeah, didn't he hit like the like a hit like the sun or something? Or no, he. Okay, okay. So let me let me explain Which this. Which one do you start with? Let me exp- <laughs> let me explain the play by play because I know exactly the one I'm, you're talking about. I might have talked about this before. Yeah, but yeah, there perhaps. is a scene where one of the powers is Tezka. Tezka zone. <laughs> is he has a power called Tezka zone, right? So good. And uh, the power the power is no matter where you want the ball to go when you return it to him, the ball will always spin towards his zone of control, right? So that's the, so that's the power. So the visual metaphor that they go that they go to, huh? Orbit is that so Tezka is like kind of like the beginning of everything, the start of the universe, basically. This is okay. Uh, every time you hit a ball, it always orbits around him. And then the balls turn into planets that turn into <laughs> the galaxy, that turn into the universe. And <clears throat> Tezuka started the big bang and the big bang turns into a tennis ball, oh I think. God. And then he hits the tennis ball and then the ball turns into an asteroid that wipes out the dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh, that's sick. <laughs> yeah. so, so good. It's like Sephiroth's final attack. It's so good. But like, that's the thing. It's like Prince of, <laughs> Prince of Tennis and uh, and Ice Shield 21 are the two sports shows, in my opinion, where these like completely unrealistic bullshit power-ups just make for some of the most entertaining I like, I like Krokono's bu- bullshit powers too. I see, I thought Kuroko's was just kind of whatever. I like them. I like really? them. Yeah, I like them. I wish, I wish Kuroko went further like Prince of Tennis did. I actually, the, when... It was when Prince of Tennis started going a little bit further that it started to lose me. Really? Um, yeah. I think Tezuka Zone was f- like funny. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wasn't taking that scene seriously at all. <laughs> I didn't take the entire show seriously. But- there was a point where I took it seriously. Um, and then I k- kind of realized, number one, uh, I think I fucking despise the main character. <laughs> Is like, he a dick or like why? Okay, like I just, it, I, I, I was I was with him until it kind of made me realize that he's like this like 11, 12 year old prodigy who's just oh. so fucking cocky oh. and uh, arrogant. And I'm like, man, imagine if he existed in real life. And, <laughs> and Could you like, imagine 11, 12 year old going mother, mother, bunny? Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. He points his fucking tennis racket at you and uh, you do and, so uh, you and just go as mother, 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 And I'm it. like, you are 12. And I'm like, you okay. <laughs> Listen to you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah, um, but like Prince of, Ten- uh, Prince of Tennis was actually my first sports anime as well. Mm. I, I still have a lot of nostalgia over it, but I can't- It was fun, it was stupid fun. I can't say it's better than other sports anime that I've watched after Prince of Tennis. Yeah, that's but- why I say it's kind of like my guilty pleasure sports show. Cause it's like a sports show that's so ridiculous that you can't take it seriously. Yeah. And it just goes beyond a sports anime. I love that we have Death Note and then Sports Death Note on here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> One Outs. I love One Outs so much. One Outs is such an underrated so sports underrated. anime. It's it's not many people talk about it anymore, but this is my kind of like pick for a sports anime that not not enough people have watched. Mm, so good, and I still think the quality is there. If yep. you want to watch Death Note, but uh, with the Death baseball. Note logic <laughs> applied to baseball, watch One Outs. D- does Mudan have uh, opinions? No. You didn't get any? Okay. Cause like Afro Samurai is an interesting pick. I mean, it's a fucking fantastic show, but I've never heard him even mentioning Afro Samurai. I mean, the fact that Samuel Jackson voices- Well, yeah. Uh, didn't he, English didn't he produce crazy. it? I'm not sure actually. He was. I think he was like one of the lead staff in that. I think he either wrote it or produced it or something. I I've actually never fact. watched it. I just know that Samuel Jackson voices him. Oh, you would love it. Really? You would love yeah. it. It's such a good show. Uh, Helsing is like, I mean, yeah, who doesn't like Helsing? I love the dub of Helsing. Dub the English, of Helsing was, is the English is so fucking good. It's just, it's just fucking handshakers. Like, why? I, why I can see why he likes it. Really? I mean, it's. I can't see why anyone would like it. Midon mean, loves bad things. <laughs> yeah. He loves. <laughs> I get that. Because he loves, he, he loves weird shit. No, I yeah. get that. But like, I, you know, there's, I have a lot of shows that I love where it's like, it's so bad that it's good. But Handshakers wasn't even, it's so, so bad that it's good. It's just so bad. On a visual perspective, which even I know, a storytelling perspective. Well, a storytelling perspective, I think was just. I very... can't power up unless <coughs> I'm touching a girl's hand. That's yeah. literally the entire premise of handshake. Storytelling perspective was very generic, you know. But yeah. from a visual perspective, it is it is actually like I, incredible. I'd like to imagine <laughs> that he's re- rebuttaling all, all that we're saying. In the, in the, <laughs> yeah, the in text the, notes yeah, right text here. Notes. This Leon, is why Leon, you're wrong. Leon would say something like he'd look at you dead in the face and go. 
Yeah, and it's awesome that they hold hands. <laughs> That's what he would say. That was a really good mood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do like how uh, out of everything here, there's just this nice feel good anime that's Hinamatsuri, you know. I never actually watched it. What, what, if if what there's if like? there's one, Handshakers isn't the thing that uh, stands out to me the most mm. in this one, uh, because it's actually Hinamatsuri, because it mm. proves to me that Udan isn't a robot. He's a human. And <laughs> yeah, he, he's a human with emotions. Cause everything else I'm like, ah, okay. This is uh, <laughs> like yeah. only an AI could enjoy handshakers. You know, I can, in, I can understand the enjoyment uh, from, from just a it's purely- just fascinating. From, from, from a purely technical perspective yeah. that is fucking fascinating. Hinamatsuri is just so fucking feel good. Mm. Um, it looks feel good. It's yeah, it's, it's- Would you recommend? I would actually recommend. Okay. I th I only the only thing the only reason I think that more people didn't talk about it was because it came out in a year that was an absolute banger of anime years mm. in ten in terms of shows coming out. So right. it just got swept under the rug. Um, but it's one of those shows that does this whole, you know, showing the relationship between a father and a daughter mm. really really well. If you watch Hinamatsuri, you will and you. Are a father uh, and you have a daughter. This is this is the show for you because okay. uh, it'll make. <laughs> so it's a soggy drop with a good ending. It's not. It's not even good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Uh, you sold me. All right. All right. All right cool. Thanks, Moon on. Let's do the next. Line. I'm Thank looking forward to much. the amount of shit he's going to talk. We've seen a lot of death notes on the list. So yeah, far. and Terror Resonance as well. I think that's the Terror second. Terror Resonance. Two terror, is that third time we've seen Death Note now, or yes, second? I think so. Selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing, however you cha-ching. My fellow business enjoyers, Shopify is a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of business. Let us do business together, yes. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage, Shopify's there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. From their all-in-one e-commerce platform, their in-person POS system, wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. The thing I really like about Shopify is that no matter how big or small your business is, they have something to help everyone along the way, and they give you everything you need to take control of your business. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US, and Shopify's the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklyn, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. So what are you waiting for? Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash trash, all lower case. Go to shopify.com slash trash now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. That's shopify.com slash trash. See you soon, fellow entrepreneurs. All right, say no more. Say oh. no more. Oh. Yeah, I know yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Three, two, one. Emily. Emily. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Fruits Basket. I saw fucking Card Captor. I saw Ori Monogazari. I saw, fuck, what else is there? Everything. Is that Tokyo Mew Mew in the bottom there? That is Tokyo Mew Mew yeah. at the bottom. Yes. I mean, yeah, every show is um, follows girls. This is everything <laughs> Emily draws. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is literally everything Emily draws. So there's Nichijo, uh, Fruits Basket, Card Captain Sakura, Ore Monogatari, Kaguya Sama, Panty Stocking, which is based. Yeah. Um, fucking Konosuba, Tokyo Mew Mew, and what's the bottom right one there? Uh, Skip and Loafer. That's, that's something that aired this year. Generally. Yeah, they love okay. Skip and Loafer. Yeah. Okay. Skip and Loafer is great. Okay. Uh, I didn't see it, one shockingly. Of yeah, gen genuinely, I know why Emily put Skip and Loafer there. That show screamed Emily. It it's looks like it looks like Emily drew that. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it? it's cute. It's feel good. It's one of my favorite romances that aired this year as well. And it's been a long time since I've seen characters that actually feel like people and okay. not anime characters. Um, it's just a very genuine show. Honestly, the one that sticks out to me is Panny and Stocking. I did not expect, I mean, I, I assume Emily's gonna say like, oh, I like panty stocking because the art style is so unique, which it was, and it still is to this day. But it just, I don't know, it doesn't, it didn't, it doesn't seem like a show that Emily would be into, you know what I mean? I can, I'm, I'm uh, like, hang out with Emily. I wouldn't be surprised if she put this on here uh -huh. uh, because she saw, it was like, you know, knowing what type of person Emily is and the background that she has. No, it's like seeing Panty in the stocking for the first time and just hearing the amount of fucking swearing. Yeah. And just how grossly 
uh, just how gross it is at some point. She's yep. like, oh, oh my God, may maybe this is like awakening something in me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, why, why do I, why do I kind of like, why do I kind of dig this? What the hell? I and I love- feel like saying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just say fuck and shit in my anime. And it has a transformation sequence as well. Yeah. Where, like magical <laughs> girls, what? Yeah, because Fanny is talking is just, a it's, magical magical girl series in disguise. It's right? so good. Yeah. And Painting Stocking season two coming out soon. Fuck yeah. I'm Let's go. It. I'm yeah. so pumped for that. Obviously uh, <laughs> Cardcaptor Sakura as well. Uh, I don't know if Emily watched Cardcaptor Sakura or the OG Cardcaptors, uh, which I count as a different show. That is a different show. Yeah. Because, Why, what, what's the difference? Uh, because it was dubbed for America and oh. it kind of, did you hear about the One Piece for kids dub controversy at well, all? Well, when they changed like like animation. No, okay. It's just- Yeah, they, which, which controversy are we talking about? Yeah, there's about? a lot. Okay, just the just the fact that it exists. Well, yeah, I, remember the, I remember, cause I watched One Piece uh, on Cartoon Network and I remember yeah. that, that like it, they'd change all like the weapons to like toy weapons. Sanji doesn't they, smoke cigarettes, he yeah. eats lollipops. I remember that too. It, it goes more than that. They changed all of the music to resemble more like Saturday morning cartoons. So all the original soundtrack is I mean, gone. Best anime opening ever. They made, changed characters to be, hey, hey wacky, I'm going to say a pun kind of like character. Uh, so they basically changed the entire vibe and everything about the show. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't say Card Captors was on that same level of changes, but there definitely was a hell of a lot of changes. Mm. Uh, I mean, they changed the names of the characters. Uh, I think Sakura is the same because it's Card Captor yeah. Sakura. Uh, I think her best friend, they changed her name to Madison. <laughs> Madison. Madison. Yeah, they changed what her was, name to her, Madison. What was her real name? I can't remember. Because Why I, does, I'm, okay. not gonna lie, I'm not going to lie. It's certainly fucking that, Madison. That, I'm not going to lie. dog looks like it's fan art inserted into that picture. <laughs> it does. It does. Furry art, so like it, salivating. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't look real. It does look like a piece of furry art. <laughs> it looks like it's just been put in there. <laughs> <laughs> God, <laughs> my OC with Sakura. Like, why, like, what is that? Is that Madison? <laughs> <laughs> no, Madison's the black haired chick. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I forgot. I forgot what his, what his name was. Now I, I haven't forgot. seen Card Captor in so goddamn long. I'll be, I'll be honest. I remember more about Card it Captors than like, Card Captor uh, Sakura. There, uh, in Japan, there seems to be a, these shows that are more aesthetic shows, and this seems to fall into that, where I see a lot of people who like more so the aesthetic than the actual show itself. Well, Card Captor Sakura was, uh, is written by Clamp, who made some of the most mm. like, mm -hmm. you know, visually aesthetic shows yeah, yeah, of yeah. that kind, right? Yeah. So like everything Clamp made was just like, oh my God, this looks so pretty. Cause like when I ask people, you know, who really like the show, I'm like, why do you like it? They're like, I just love the like aesthetic and I love the, the vibe of it. Yeah. More, as opposed to, hey, look, it's got a great story. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I remember the vibe of Card Captor Sakura. I don't remember. Oh yeah, her name was actual. Tomoyo. Tomoyo? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Tomoyo. Yeah. And it became yeah. Madison. Madison. Is, hey, Madison. Wait, is, so it was, was- That is out of pocket. So did they change all the character names? No, I think Lee, they didn't change because Lee, there's, you know, we just Kero say- Kiro Barris is his name. Kiro was his name. Kiro? Yeah, Kiro. Okay, I guess Kiro Barris was too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah Kiro Barris was too long. Kiss her on Santa. It was Kiro. I think they changed, they changed his, uh, her brother's name as well. God so it's not it. Yukito. Um, so and he's like John. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sakura <Yeah>. and Clive. <laughs> I like how they just kept Sakura. Cause it was like Sakura. 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 The beautiful. God. Uh, card capture Sakura dub character names. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see. What do we got? Uh, Sakura Avalon instead oh, of Sakura yeah. uh, Kinimoto. Sharon Lee is Lee Shoron. Oh my okay, God. Okay, Kara Barris is still Kara. Okay, that's good. Tomoyo is Madison Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Toya Kinomoto is Tori Avalon. Okay, okay. Yukito is Julian Star. What <laughs> 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 the fuck? Okay, Maylin Lee is Maylin Ray. What the fuck? Why? What? <laughs> Why? Why that change? That makes no sense Ari whatsoever. Ariel Hiragizawa is Eli Moon. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. They didn't change Nakura's name though. Ruby Moon. Layla mm. McKenzie. Kaho Mizuki is Layla McKenzie, bruh. Well, yeah, that's- Chiharu is Chelsea. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, why would you do that? Zachary? God. God, back back in the day of English localizing dubs. Oh, man. Wei Wang is still Wei Wang. Wei though. Wang, yeah. They were like, that's that's just a banger. That's a banger. Yeah, name. Wei Wang is <laughs> so easy. Wei to Wei Wang say. is a banger name. Maki we're not changing Matsumoto that. Matsumoto is just Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> 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 what the actual fuck? <laughs> oh my yeah, god. Yeah, so I'm interested. I, I I'm assuming she would have watched the Wait, dub what? of Card Captors uh, because that's was the thing that aired on TV back oh in the day. Oh my God, that's so funny. Of course, yeah, Nietzsche is there. Yeah, um, I went to the still... Nietzsche cafe with her, it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Nietzsche I've still been meaning to watch. So funny. Still been meaning to watch that. I, I know it's so goaded and everyone talks about how yeah. amazing it is. I just need to watch it. I mean, it it's like, the obviously the comedy is always subjective. So like it's a lot of, I know a lot of people who don't really understand the comedy of Nietzsche Joe because they just don't really like the kind of mm. lol random subverting expectations kind of humor. But yeah. what makes the show so goaded is just Kyoto animations. Just work on it. It's I like the style so it. aesthetically beautiful. It's so impressive and expressive. And they managed to like hold on to uh, Arai Keiichi's like manga art style mm. as well. Like mm -hmm. the manga looks yeah, exactly it, it, it looks the same. looks very unique. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised Nichijo hasn't been, like maybe it came out too early or maybe not enough people watched it. I think it was ahead of its time. But it was sure. it's the perfect meme reaction show. Oh yeah. You know, to the point where I'm surprised I don't see more meme reactions of just Nichijo characters, mm. you know? Totally. Um, well, yeah. I, uh, Ori Monogatari as well, my yeah. love story. I only watched, was there only one season of that? I can't remember. Yeah, I believe so. Um, it was, it was aight, I guess. <laughs> it was, it was aight. It was aight. It was aight. It was good. It was but cute. It, that character just looks like how Emily draws herself. I mean, that's a very <laughs> common theme with Emily favorite shows. Like Emily yeah. wishes- Emily's kicking this. No, I don't do that. Emily like, wishes she was Tora from Fruits Basket, bro. Yeah. That, that is Emily. <laughs> Yeah. This is this this is just hi, hello. I'm a klutz main character yeah. energy. I, I, the one scene I remember from my love story is just the scene where she, I don't know, she's running off for something and then she trips over, and then she just, and then they they show her tripping over, and she's just lying flat on the ground, just like dead, just like dead. <laughs> and, and I was like, why, why did they have to put that scene in? I don't know. Yeah, I did uh, think all those character types were made up. Until I met Emily and I was like, wait, people are actually this clumsy yeah. and clumsy. Yeah, because I know exactly why she put uh, uh, fucking- uh, Konosuba. Konosuba in as well. Yeah. Because Aqua is Emily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aqua is Emily with blue hair. Tokyo Mew Mew, I guess, you know, you just grew up on that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's a solo magical girl show. Um, and yeah, uh, Kaguya Sama is just a really fucking good show. Just, you know, in general. It is the modern, like equivalent of that first romance anime that this new generation is mm. going to look back on totally and think hey what's like what would you say is the kaguya summer of our generation romance school yeah. days school days <laughs> no i'd say oh. well because like mm, i don't know was there a romance comedy like kaguya summer that came out because like i feel a lot of the romance shows that we look fondly over. I feel it was Toradora. Yeah, but like, I was yeah, gonna Toradora. say Toradora, but like, it's not the same vibe, right? Cause Kaguya Summer definitely, especially I don't think early. It has to be the same vibe. I don't think it has to be exactly the same vibe. I was just talking romance in just general. Just the big romance. Then, yeah. yeah, Toradora okay, for sure. So, because here's, here's the trajectory every, like a lot of anime fans take, yeah. right? Uh, which is you discover anime through one of the mainstream stream shonens. Maybe it's probably Naruto sure. back in the day. And then you're like, oh wait, there are things, there are anime, about things that aren't people punching each other. Mm. And then there's always like that one guy or that one friend who recommends a romance anime to, for you to watch. And I feel like in this day and age, it is Kaguya Sama. Uh, in our yeah, generation? It'd probably be Toradora because that one guy was probably like, don't worry, there's some actual epic action scenes in Toradora. <laughs> I feel like it was either Toradora or Clanad. Yeah. Does Clanad count as a romance? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. It's just the slowest romance of all fucking time. <laughs> it's also one of the most depressing romances of all time. Part two is, part two is. Yeah, it's yeah, just depressing because you're like, fucking talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. I it's mean, what else can we say about all, this? All of these romances is the kind of romances that Connor absolutely despises as uh, well. Yeah, yeah. These are all romances I would despise. I mean, the only one you kind of like is Panty and Stocking. I fuck with Panty and Stocking a lot. Yeah, Konosuba you like, right? I love Konosuba, yeah. And you like Kaguya-sama? 
I haven't watched Kaguya Sama. Oh, okay. I think you'd like Kaguya Sama. I don't think you would like Kaguya Sama. Really? No, no. Why not? Well, because Kaguya Sama has why, a lot of comedy not? elements to it, which I think he might find. That, that he can't look past the high school element of that. Uh, just, yeah, the high school element is frustrating. Okay. It's it the the entire like a lot of the comedy revolves around this idea of them being the student uh, the student council. Right. Oh, I fucking hate student council. <laughs> 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 I like I I know Connor. Okay, I'm like okay. he he'll hear well, high school. He's I, like I take okay, that back. Then. Okay, take maybe back. maybe I could look past. It. He will see student council who was like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Why okay, is the student no council in, in Japanese anime have more power than the fucking presidency? They, they, they somehow can get shit done. Because that's what Japanese high school kids wish in their head. Oh. That's how they envision it in their head. Cause that's all they know. I don't know. It's all just right. a power fantasy, you know? All right. But yeah, uh, this was very typical of Emily. Good job. Uh, <laughs> let's good, job good job, Emily. Good job, Emily. For, good job. Uh, you know, fulfilling right. your stereotypes. Yes. Let's go on to the next one. Next one. Oh, good thing to know that we do indeed know our friends. Uh, yeah, we're pretty good at this. Yeah, we're four for four so Yeah, far. four for four. Oh, I know who this is. <laughs> oh, I think I know who this is as well. Yeah, I know who this is. Yeah, I know who this is. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, yeah. Wait, what? We have three people left, Shindo L, yeah. Sydney and Kaho. One of them doesn't make sense, but I'm pretty sure the rest is. All right. Wait, no, this one's, I actually don't know this one. This could be any of them. No. Really? Yes, I know who this is. Okay, should we go in three, two, one? Okay, I'm gonna take a guess. Okay. Right. Ready? Three, two, one, one. Sydney. Sydney. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, Anna, thing, Anna Hana and Orimo. Yeah, okay. I, I looked at like Aiken, Kamichamakani, like Anohana, or What Orima. the fuck is that Aiken art? I just saw that. Why oh, does everyone have the most giant tits? Aiken <laughs> is A, one of the worst anime ever made. B, one of the funniest shows because it's just so bad. So, so I, I remember, so the reason I know this was because she obviously told me to this, yeah. uh, told me uh, the shows to put on. Yeah. Uh, I noted down some things about why they're on there as well. Okay. Because oh, she was saying some of this shit. Uh, see, she was saying some of this shit. The the first show she says is Naruto, and I'm like, I've been with you for ten years. We are married now. I didn't even know you've watched Naruto. I, I, I was, yes, I, I was- I think like, she was just trying to please her husband. When she, started, <laughs> she was like, what the fuck? You've watched Naruto? Why Sydney, she, we've been married. And she was like, yeah, uh, this was, uh, this was her first anime. Uh, and wow. it was the very first time she felt goosebumps watching, uh, watching any shonen or any show mm. in general. Uh, she talks about the That's Rock Lee versus Gara fight. Yeah. And I'm like, excuse me, how, how have you never talked to me about you've this? Never, you've never referenced taking off the weights. Yeah, <laughs> you've never referenced taking off the weights. You know, you you clown on everyone who watches Naruto. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so that was the biggest kind of like surprise for me. So Aiken, what, Aiken. what is this show about so, other than big tits? So Aiken is a show from the early 2000s and one or two episode OVA, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, set in high school. Yeah. Um, and it is one of the most overtly s over sexualized, overreacted, just like comedy shows, imagine, I guess. Imagine if uh, fan service characters were some, Lovecraftian nightmare <laughs> creatures. Yeah, uh, like that. That's Aiken because you look at their like you look at their tits, and it's it's like it's, it's it goes beyond not even knowing how the female anatomy works. Yeah, it's it's. I just, just remember the character the 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 character with like literally the biggest pair of tits I've ever seen in my life. Like yeah. it's like the size of her entire body. Yeah. And they are, they go full jiggle physics oh, as, with it as well. The fucking scene. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> and uh, Sydney told me that this is on there because this is the very first etchy show that she watched. <laughs> This this what? this was the very first etchy show How that she, she watched. How did she stumble it across this? I never even heard of this. Because show. this one, this is such an infamous show. Yeah, because this show got infamous because of the tits. Like yeah. you go on like any forums, and someone would have uh, like some sort of like gif. Of one of the girls with her tits like yeah. fucking flopping about. I want to check this out on YouTube. Please, right now. yeah. Watch any scene from definitely, Aiken definitely. And you'll be like, what the fuck is going? Definitely on? gonna get age restricted if we show any clips on here. Yeah. But she told me that this was the first etchy show she ever watched, <laughs> and she That's was, so funny. and she was so terrified <laughs> that her dad 
would find out what she was watching, uh, that she literally system rebooted her entire computer <laughs> after watching Aiken. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's a great fucking choice. Yeah. You know, I, I would, I would, I think I would just smash my computer with a hammer. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Which, which scene are you watching? This is like their boobs are like sentient things. Yeah. Yep, yep, that's yep. the scene, I'm, yeah, that's the yeah, scene that's, I remember. That, that, that is the scene. That's the scene I remember. What the heck? I was gonna make a video on this show years ago and I was like, I don't think I can without getting like fucking <laughs> community guidelines striked for showing anything. Okay, yep. see, I looked at this three by three and the reason why I got confused is because of Bo Bo Bo. Same here, bro. Same here. Yeah. I, have, I, had no, I fucking love Bo 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 and Sydney and I have never talked about Bo Bo Bo. <laughs> Sydney's never mentioned this to me either. Yeah, what the fuck? And no way. She's watched Bubba Bo. Yeah, she fucking. What? I mean, when she that was actually that was the second thing she said after Naruto. I was, she was like Naruto, Bubba Bo Bo Bo, because uh yeah it's those. Bo -bo 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 -bo. I don't fucking right. know. <laughs> Come <laughs> how, on. How, Do not put disrespect on my <laughs> man's name. I don't, I, don't, I don't fucking know, man. It is one of the funniest manga series I've ever read. I'll be I'll be honest. I haven't seen it. It's, it was. It's so fucking funny. So what was her reasoning for putting it on list? Uh, that it was Naruto and Bo 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 of however many. Did I say? Did they say it? The amount, right amount. Bo 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 Bo. Uh, those were like just her two childhood animes. It was huge on Cartoon Network. I remember. Like yeah, yeah. The dub was really popular overseas. Yeah, yeah. I think Naruto and Bo Bo Bo. I didn't know this because in England we did not get Bo 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 at all. At all. Uh, so Naruto I knew about, but I didn't know that was like widely spread on television as well. Yeah. Um, Bobo Bo is just the most like, if you took every kind of poo poo pee pee humor and <laughs> throw it into a, I think, I think the you original- You sold me. <laughs> I think the original manga was like almost 30, cha uh, 30 volumes. Um, yeah. But it is, oh my God. Like this is still to this day, one of the most absurd yet hilarious comedy shows. And the, and the anime as well is really fucking funny as well. Yeah. Obviously, Oren High School Host Club, that checks out, that that is like- That checks out. Hello, I have just, it, <laughs> I have just discovered my first uh, shoujo anime. Anohana checks out. I think I've heard Sydney sing the ending more than I've actually heard the actual ending. Do you think so, Anohana- Sydney does bring up Anohana a lot. Yeah. Yeah, do you think Anohana would have aged well at all? Um, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I, I watched it and when I watched it, I was like, uh, this is a show that I never ever want to watch again. So I'll never find out. <laughs> I just, I just never wanted to watch it again. I, was I, like, I'll I find. mean, I for one, if I needed, to, if I needed to cry, I would put on Anahana. Yeah, oh I for one yeah. fucking loved this show when I watched it. Uh, cried like a baby at the end. Beautiful music as well. Yeah, opening and ending banger. Um, yeah. I don't know if I would recommend it to people today though. I know, right? It's it hard. I think, I think it's really. Like, I think people who watch it now, some people will like really fucking connect to it. And then others will be like, this See, is so cheesy. I'm scared to rewatch it because I hold it really, really close Same. to my heart. It's it's the, the vibe of the show is everything that I love, but at the, same, at the same time, I think back to it and I'm like, a lot of this, I love the crying, the sad part of the aspects just yeah. feels really cheap. Like, mm. yeah. yeah, let me play this really sad song yeah. when I want you to cry. Yeah. And it worked, it worked. It like conditioned us. Like we were mm. a fucking dog. To be like, okay, you hear the bell or oh, you cry dog. now, you cry. What I would recommend instead, I think, instead of Anahana is uh, Makia. The, the Makia? Yeah, oh, yeah, because that's written by the same person. And I think Makia is just, I think is, is the better <clears throat> aged version of Anahana. God, do you, do you know what I think would be interesting? Cause yeah. I was, I had this thought the other day where you take a show like Anahana or some other really popular show uh, and you do kind of like an after story of all of the characters grown up, right? And just seeing just seeing where, like, I, I think, Kai, can you pull up the Anohana 10 years later? Kai, like, they did, they did a 10 years later drawing and I saw it and I'm like, oh, just give me like, just give me one, uh, like a side story. Ready. I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> look, look at this, look at this. Look at that poster. Oh my uh, God. Click, ah! Yeah. Ah! No. <laughs> click on the close up. My babies. <laughs> can, we see a, can we see a close up He's of this one? He's got a beard. He's got a beard. Oh my God. Nah, nah, oh my, nah. 
Yeah. I'm not, bro turned into a hippie man. Look I'm, at the main character. I'm, yo, the guy on the left is me for real. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, I wasn't ready for that. They're like, yeah. they're like salary man, bro. Yeah, Shit. I know. Right in the fields, oh, man. Oh, that's just. I will say, like the fucking blue haired girl. Whew. Yeah, like, shit, be careful shit. of who you, who you make fun of in high school, yeah. man. <laughs> be careful of who you make fun of in high, fun yeah, of in high school. Should have done anime from this age. Would have been more interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's still hope. You know, they might remake it. Who knows? Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I mean, I would, I would not necessarily Anahana, but mm. I would love to see something like this in general. True, uh, true. Especially because all we get is like the fucking what if official collaboration pieces or what if yeah. fan arts, uh, but I would love to see something like that because I think that sure. would be absolutely incredible. Um, All right, going back to the three by three though, here's another question I had for Sydney. Mm. Higurashi. Yeah. Now on this three by three, it's the recent remake, re-adaptation uh, of it. It should have been the original Higurashi. The original? Okay. Yeah. Just, uh, put it okay, yeah. okay. I wanted to ask, are we talking about the original Higurashi? Yeah. Um, I mean, checks out. She checks out. she loves her horror, so yeah. this is not surprising at all. And there is not a lot to pick from. For... It's the most solid entry, I'd say. The, yeah, the original one for sure. Yeah, I can see this one. This is always the first horror anime that got spread around, just because it was like so shocking that cute girls could actually, you know, it's a cutesy art style, but actually they're all murderous girls, and there's blood, and there's gore, yeah. and it has one of the most convoluted stories ever written in horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I know. I straight. never. I've never finished the second season of Higurashi, it, which I know. Bad. Kai. Yeah. No, I liked it. I thought it was too slow. Really? Yeah. In the first season, is too slow too. I mean, I've and, played the original visual oh, novel, okay. and that is way slower than the anime. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, but that's a, that that attracts a certain kind of person. You know what's good though? The Higurashi manga is actually, I think, I more that. terrifying than the anime. Oh, because okay. what they did with the Higurashi manga, which I really like, because you know how Higurashi split up into like different sections, I guess, yeah. in yeah. the story. So what they did in the manga was each section is actually illustrated by different manga artists. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. So each section, yeah. So you yeah. actually, if, when you go through each section, you actually get completely different visuals and different mm. re interpretations of that part of the story. And some of them are, well, some of the most terrifying manga panels I've ever I seen. I cannot think about the show without that scene from that documentary where the guy's like, yeah, today I researched how much gas it would take to blow up a school. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> what what? There is this documentary on YouTube yeah. following, I think like the family that was like making the visual novel game. Mm. If you go to YouTube, type in like, uh, Higurashi documentary. It's actually a pretty cool documentary of them just following the family that makes it. Right. And- uh, The Yukishio 7, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if it's all dedicated to it, but there is like one scene where the old guy, I, I swear he looks at his PC, yet yeah. he turns around and he goes, well, today for accuracy, I had, to, I had to figure out how much gas it would take to blow up a school for one of the <laughs> scenes. And I was like, I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think you had to research that. Well, you needed to make it realistic, right? Yeah. I was like, did that have any bearing on the plot? Was it like a question that like, was like, how much gas should we buy, guys? Oh, yes, yes, officer. That's that's why being an author is just the best way to- How many views Give yourself- have? 629. 629 views. How the fuck did you find that? It, it, it was, um, it, I think it's been re-uploaded a bunch. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah it's from an NHK program from 2005. Yeah, there's no way they uh, uploaded in 60 FPS in 2005. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the fuck, why did they sure. do that? But yeah, they basically followed him and there's a scene where he's like the old man. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah, can you play it from here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like around here. The father who wants banned games is in charge of background research. For one game, I had to research and chart volcanic gas composition. And for another, I had to figure out how much gas was needed to blow up a classroom. <laughs> I, I literally, I literally cannot think about this show without just imagining an old man Googling yeah. how much gas it takes to blow up a classroom. I'm surprised I'm getting that, on some actually. government list. I'm yeah. surprised I'm, I remembered that exact, what the exact scenario. Oh my God. <laughs> and I just, I just, I have no idea. Hey it's, man, they had to make sure <laughs> it could be a real, because remember Higurashi- You do not, you do not need to measure that. You Higurashi not, no. is a mystery horror. That how had to he, be realistic. Yeah, how did he calculate that? I don't know. 
Uh, I was, I'm sure there is somewhere. Yeah, I saw it on 2chan probably. Yeah, dude, I, I just can't Reddit, imagine. Reddit, Reddit, figure it out. There's gonna be someone in the subreddit on, on this episode that's being like, subreddit. I figured out the gas composition the exact amount and how much you need needed. It's probably someone like, on Reddit being like, depends yeah, like, on the size yeah. of the how, how did you research that? Tell me, like, like <laughs> okay, did you really need to research that? I don't know. I, I've yeah. never once seen an explosion, a piece of media and thought, no. No, no there wasn't enough right. gas there. It just doesn't seem right. Uh, hey man, some authors want the believability of their story to be watertight. But it's yeah. just the fact that it's the whole family producing it and it's yeah. the father. It's just the old, this old man who's just <laughs> sitting there, looks deadpan on the camera today. I had to research how to blow up a school. It's the deadpan, <laughs> it's like, it's the deadpan voice over that fucking kills me. Yeah, it's so it's good. So good. It's so fucking funny. But yeah, good choice, I think, for a horror anime. Um, what on earth is this? Uh, Kami Kamichama Kani. Kamichira Kaden. Kamichama Kani. I've heard Sydney talking about this. I've never seen it myself. This All like, I know- This is like a Saturday Night Live parody of anime. Yeah. <laughs> the eyes are so All I know monstrously big. is that yeah. there is one scene or the one uh, clip uh, screenshot that got really, really memed. And mm. it's the one where it's like, search up, search up Kamichama Karen eyes. And I'm sure it's gotta be. I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's where she looks like a fucking bug. Like fucking where the. Yeah. 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 yeah! That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll see this. Wait, this, is, this looks like my drawings of characters. Everybody <laughs> thinks this is an edit, but this is actually in the episode. <laughs> this is what, in why? The episode. Because this is what the art style was in the <laughs> early why 2000s. The fuck? This is the. Uh, Mid 2000s, how to draw anime art book. Yeah. <laughs> oh, style. there's also canon as well. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is the plot of the show? I don't even know. It, I think it's some kind of magical girl show from yeah. the looks of it. It looks like a magical girl 13 show. 13 year old Cuddy Hanazono feels like her life can't get any worse. Parents died when she was young. Jesus. That was not how I thought the show was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving her with an aunt who doesn't hesitate to call her stupid unless <laughs> and useless over her poor grades. God damn. Uh, her only friend, her cat named Shichan, passed away recently. Oh, oh my god! god. Oh my Bro, she god. can't catch a break. Uh, begins her moment. Uh, moment her life turns around for the better when she is approached by a girl who also has lost her parents and her cousin who finds girls to be troublesome. Both of them are searching for a goddess. Her mother's memento ring brings uh, shines brightly in their presence and fills her with its radiance, making her smarter, faster, and capable of granting wishes. Okay, so oh, it's like a mega depressing god, magical girl god. spin. I guess. God damn. So why does why does uh, Sydney like? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> she. Uh... <laughs> so what the fuck? Well, God, so that, that leads uh, explain why she likes. So it. that leads into Evangelion, right? I <laughs> uh, no, but uh, well, Evangelion is how you guys met, right? Evangelion is how we met, but also she actually watched it because uh, I showed it to her, and uh, mm. it really, really fucking connected with her. I mean, it's uh, a fucking, it's a you know, legendary show for a reason. Yeah. So I would say Kimichiwa Karen, I don't know. I like, I've talked to her a lot about Kimichiwa Karen. She mm. she just holds it close to her heart. This, this must be like the, that one nostalgic, uh, you know, guilty pleasure show that you grew up with. Like, yeah, You yeah, know exactly. it's not the best, but you have a special place True. with it. Fair yeah, enough. which well, is fair. All right. Well, All right very cool. fun, Lesty, though. Very fun. Well, now I know next time I see Sydney, I'm going to talk to her about Bobo. So we have yeah. Kaho or Shindo Al. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Okay, so here's the second or last one that we have. Uh, I'm pretty confident. Wow. I am pretty confident. I think I am also confident. No, actually, fuck. This could be either Kaho or Shindo. Oh, actually, shit. you're right. You're right. Kaho or Shindo could say. It's like a mixture of what I think the two of them will like. Macross Frontier. Mac, so we have Mac, So we have Digimon, uh, Digimon Adventures. We have Isekai Quartet. We have a, some show I've never seen. Vampire Dies in Nose Time, which is quite a recent one, if I'm not mistaken. Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, Akibis, Akibis Sailor Uniform, uh, Madoka Magica. Oh, what is that middle one at the bottom there? I've seen that before. And Isn't her circumstances. Oh yes, you're right. And Macross Frontier. Yeah. Shit. Um, I think I, no. It's, actually, it's it's I'm literally, leaning, I, 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 was, I was confident and then I looked at some of them and I'm like, wait. I'm leaning more towards Shindo, but some of these choices could be, is also Kaho. Okay. I'm okay. pretty sure. I'm gonna say Shindo. I, I think it's Kaho. I think it's Kaho. Really? I, I remember- brought up to me Macross more than anyone else yeah, ever in my life. Really? Kaho, Kaho has brought up Macross uh, 
in the first podcast that we recorded. Right. I remember. She loves Macross. I yeah. Know. yeah. And yeah, I yeah. believe, she, I remember talking to her about Digimon as she well. She does like Digimon uh, too. Yeah. She does yeah. bring up Digimon a lot. Otherwise, I would, I would have been like, oh, this is Shindoel. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Who, who is it? Oh, yeah. oh, oh thank God. God. All right. Okay. okay. Wow. So <laughs> this is such an interesting, what is that top right one? Medier? Nudie, it says. Oh, Nudie, sorry. I don't think it's meh. Oh, God. Katakana. It looks like maybe Katakana. 80s, early 90s, maybe. Yeah, so Kaho has watched an ungodly amount of anime. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't fully appreciate this when we first had Kaho on, when she started bringing up fake weebs. And I was like, I thought she just meant like some people who watch like two anime. Yeah. But I yeah. think she means like 90% of people who watch anime. <laughs> Because Kaho has watched so much anime, yeah, yeah, uh, and her knowledge of it is very impressive. So this this looks like a very varied list, very varied. And I wonder why I've always wondered why Kaho likes Digimon so much. She actually did give me reasonings though. Oh, she uh, did. She did. Yeah. It's because it's the superior Pokemon. How fucking okay. Dare you. Well, <laughs> is there one you'd like to know about first? I can. I can. <laughs> what is the top right one? What is that? The top right one. Okay, yeah. that's a good question. Okay, let me scroll up. Okay, here we go. I have, I have the list. Yeah. Um, it is. Is it? Uh, I've never seen it before. It looks like a show. Akibi Chan's Sailor Uniform. No, no, that's a different no, one. No, no, that's that's the one on the okay, middle right. Uh, uh, Akazukin Cha Cha. Akazukin Cha Cha. I've seen this around, but I have no. Is this like a uh, really shoujo. This is shoujo. OG shoujo yeah. anime? Capture I mean, look at that second picture there. That okay. is that is OG shoujo manga. Kaho. Yeah. Kaho <laughs> says, capturing the mesmerizingly cute art from anime, the show manages to hold both Say So vibe and Yuri fan service. It's a gem. Wow. Say So and Yuri. The Say So. Wow. Wow. Uh, okay. I've never seen it or heard of it, but. This is OG. This is yeah. very, when did it come out? Can you, can this you must, go to Wikipedia? This must have been pretty old. Um, Kaho has also mentioned 1994. to me- 1994. Yeah, Kaho mentioned to me in the past that she really likes a lot of OVAs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the 90s was the fucking- Peak OVA. Peak OVA. I mean, I do kind of miss the OVA era of anime just because you had so many interesting and different fucking ideas mm. that didn't always appeal to the mainstream masses. Yeah. yeah. But they would- be able to be mage just because it was like a three episode OVA. We'll, we'll never yeah. get like another genocide or like violence jack or any of those. Yeah, yeah I was talking but, to Kao about it and I was like, yeah, I really want to watch more nineties OVAs. Cause mm. I, I can't remember, I was watching a show, like a random show from the nineties and the show did not call for it at all, but randomly like five minutes in just titties and like yep. naked. Yeah. And like, it wasn't brought up in like a sexual way. It yeah. was just titties. And then just moved on. No, was no like, sensor bar either. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing. And I was like, okay, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, we're really doing this. <laughs> if you want to see anime in its rawest form, then just watch weird. a bunch of 90s everything OVAs. Yeah, yeah, everything yeah, everything was weird. That's that's the point. Yeah. It didn't really matter about appealing to kind of like writing like a mainstream story. People yeah. just had weird that's fucking ideas. That's why it's so fascinating to go down that rabbit hole because you it just is. find some of the and not, wildest stories. And not everything is a banger. Uh, not everything is like the best written story, but you will have a very unique time. Yeah, uh, you will see some very unique things. Totally. Yeah, it's it's been fun. I've been watching. What did I watch? One called Key the Metal Idol. Have you heard of this one? <laughs> I have not. It's fucking weird. <laughs> it's basically like people who are trying to make uh, robots that are that you can pilot via humans, but to re to pilot it, you need to take the like soul out of someone. And it's just this weird, huh. it's so weird. And it's like 15 episode OVA and it's all got, it's like titties all the time. Is this on Netflix? No, no, it's just, I just found it, it looked weird. And I was like, I'll fucking watch yeah, it. Yeah, all of these you just have to find online. Something. Yeah. And it's like way too dark for no reason. And it's like, oh, I kind of yeah. fuck with this. Out, checks out. I fuck with this 90s stuff. Oh, you're, you're, you're going through your metal phase of- <laughs> I, I'm yeah. kind of having a fun time. It's fun just watching these random shows that are, I don't I don't think they're good or bad. I just think they're weird. It's yeah. just fascinating. And yeah. I, I've, I've been trying to find shows that have no pre-existing manga and this yeah. show was all just original OVA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, original weird. OVA. it's so weird. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I mean, I think for me, Ava and Madoka Magica, Macross and Digimon make a lot of sense. Yeah, uh, you know. A KB Sailor uniform, that was- I never saw that one. That uh, came out the... recently. Uh, it came out like two That's years ago, three years uh, ago. Uh, when did it come out? Oh wait, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> The description I gave was for Sailor's uniform. Oh, 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 Capturingly, mesmerizingly cute art from the 
and it should have managed to hold. Say so, five right, right. Fan, so. Okay, because okay, I, I, okay. I, I, I was about to fucking say. What Kao actually said about Akazuki and Cha Cha is this is one of the most differently adapted anime from the manga in 1994, adding magical girl theme, which the original comic didn't have at all. Yet oh. it totally worked. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. And okay. Then Kaho liked the Yuri and Say So vibes of Akiri Chan. So oh, right, right. Yeah, because right. I was I was uh, going to say that this this came out. Yeah, last year. Okay, it wasn't. It wasn't too long ago. Uh, two years ago, actually. Kaho, two years ago. Kaho's reasoning for Digimon. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, Joey. <laughs> Kaho's reasoning for Digimon is the best thing I've ever heard in my life. What? what? So uh, the reason why Kaho likes to has put Digimon on this list, she said, I was a student at a Protestant school. I stopped going to church on Sunday morning for this show <laughs> and, cho and chose my religion, anime. <laughs> Based. Kaho's True. English is so good that Kaho uses a semicolon. <laughs> in, in a correct way. In a correct way. I, I, what the fuck, Kaho? Oh my God. I've never used a semicolon. I think one time I used it, I had to, I had to quadruple check I used it right. <laughs> I always get the green like squiggly yeah, 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 yeah. in my word doc. It's like, I don't need to use this. Like, do okay. I use a colon or a semicolon here? I stopped going to Protestant school and chose my religion out of Hell yeah. That's so good. Yeah, um, I mean, I think Digimon, I mean, I being, being a Digimon fan myself, it was, I don't know. It was what I thought people found in Pokemon, which is you, you had your animals and shit, shit like that. Mm. Uh, but to me, Digimon just had a more engaging storyline to mm. me. No, totally. I mean, I watched both. Uh, I enjoyed both Digimon and Pokemon. Um, I like, as you said, I like Pokemon for completely different reasons to Digimon. Mm -hmm. um, Pokemon I, is just like heroin of nostalgia. Yeah. Yeah. Pokemon is just like, <laughs> turn your brain off good fun times. Whereas Digimon is actually like an engaging story. Yeah, you know? it has, it has a, engaging narrative even for it's you know for its target demographic until, until that, that is until pokemon gives you the fucking butterfree episode then you're like all right real shit real shit only men cry to this shit the, and the charizard episode the leading oh, forward meme oh, the, charizard fucked me up. the charizard episode fucked me up uh, Cow says for evangelion this show made anime more meaningful to a lot of adolescents even contributed to forming new categories like Sundere and Chunibyo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What is Chunibyo? Chunibyo is like the the trope where it's like you think you have magical powers, but you actually don't. <laughs> you know. I know that. Uh, and then Cow says you just cannot ignore the impact. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Ayanami Ray is the reason why Kudetas fucking exist. Like and she, there are Asuka. so many, and Asuka is the reason why Tsundere's are so popular. Right? Uh, Isekai Quartet. I thought, it, I thought it was ReZero, but because I only just no, it's, saw- it's yeah, Isekai Quartet. Uh, Kai says, basically like Avengers or Justice League of Isekai shows, <laughs> but turning them into chibi characters and making them go to school together. Could this be more anime? Yeah. The comedic chaos works so insanely well, uh, even even made a movie with solid story. Yeah, I, wow. I enjoyed Isekai Quartet enough just because, hey, this is an insane idea. Let's just put a bunch of different characters from different IPs and let's see what happens. Yeah, uh, I think the only reason why I liked it is because all of the Isekai characters that are in it are from Isekais I actually enjoy. Mm. Yeah, the, it's- <laughs> <laughs> like, I, like, I like Konosuba, I, wait, love wait, Overlord, wait, wait. I like ReZero, Tanya was was good enough, you know? So, yeah. so I'm just like, all right, yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, it was like a nice little fun show. It was like, to me, it more felt like fan service than an actual- Oh, totally. Than an actual show, you know? You, something like the Avengers, you're like this, kind of like built up to this massive narrative point where all of these mm. different characters come together. This just more felt like, hey, it's, it's a nice like what if fan service yeah. Uh, yeah. show where they all come together. Um, so it was enjoyable. For what me. did she say about the vampire dies in no time? Yeah, that's also yeah. Uh, vampires die, di vampire dies in no time. The mere stupidity and comfiness in, is superb in this comedy. Also voice fits each character so perfectly, including the singing part. It genuinely <laughs> captures the original manga while making it more colorful and fun. Hmm. I, d I don't know this show. I I've don't. Seen it. I, I saw this show uh, like first couple of episodes, but yeah, um, I've heard from a lot of people that this is actually a really solid show, like solid comedy yeah. show. I knew Kai would bring out the uh, more the left hookers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shows that we hadn't seen as much because Kai has just watched so many. Yeah. One one thing that I'm very happy with is that uh, she's watched. His and her circumstances, and it's been so long since. If if you're talking yeah. about a romance anime that brings back pure nostalgia for me, it is his and her circumstances. Yeah. Which which show is this? Is it's the bottom middle bottom bottom, what, bottom what's middle. What's the one. Japanese title of that? Because there's a show called Karekano. 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 Oh, yeah. Karekano. Yeah. Uh, this was a masterpiece of gy Gainax with Anno 
Uh, it's, it's, it's also on her as well, uh, and you can tell because the yeah. and the ending's whack as shit. Man. Uh, <laughs> the ending is a whack as shit. With cool <laughs> transitions and pacing of its own, the show exemplifies one of the rare times when I prefer watching anime over reading manga of the same title. For the animation, greatly helps you be emotionally invested. Was it yeah. was it Karekano used a bunch of music from Ava, or was it the other way around? I think they both use music from, from each, each other. other's oh, wow. shows, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess you've made a banga. Just why not? <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, he directed uh, Shin Godzilla as well, and oh. he just straight up uses the the iconic dun 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 yeah, yeah. dun in like the planning scene. Yeah. The and I music, and I'm yeah. like, wait, hold on a hold on a second, Arno. Yeah. Even two OST is the Katakana OST. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So Arno is just like, yo. We made it. <laughs> I'm a recycle. Uh, I'm a recycle. <laughs> is it even the same uh, genre? I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We're gonna we're gonna reuse it. Uh, I asked Caro about Madoka Magica. She says everything about Mado Magic is unique, art style, music, and more yep. importantly, story. Considering a lot of bait and switch shows came after this, the anime was so evolutional that it made a trend. Yeah, I hmm. mean, like Madoka Magica you know, was kind started, of the reason why the whole like deconstruction of genres. He, thing he started the deconstruction now. trend, and everyone's like, wait a minute. Does anyone know what deconstruction actually means? Yeah. And then everyone's like, wait, we've just no, been making, using that word. I don't know. We're just making parodies. <laughs> yeah. We got to think about this. It's like when people finally realized they didn't know what the word sakuga meant. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, we're just using it because it sounds cool. And then Macross, yeah. uh, Kano says, not only uh, the songs by Yoko Kano were bangers, mm -hmm. the romantic and professional battle between two girls was well written. Mm. Plus the fact the boys, boy in the love triangle was a career focused pilot who had a pretty face with the career background of playing a female lead in Kabuki gave him more depth than this typical, why does he get to be, popular dudes in Harry God damn, she's, God. she's more in depth than like 95% yeah. of attitude. The show <laughs> uh, was catchy in so many ways. Yeah, it was, I mean, God. yeah, it was a good I show. I mean, Macross, that was like- Legendary for a reason. That was legendary for its time, uh, legendary in Japan as well, mm. legendary for mm. its genre. It, it was also kind of like a fucking monkey paw, I guess, because I think we have Macross to thank for idols. Yeah. Or, oh God. Uh, First ever anime idol wasn't. Yeah, Macross. I mean, it, it was it was a mecha show originally a mecha show, and yeah. there was an idol in it, and then everyone was like, "Wait, we really like this idol storyline," and. Uh, and now we have- And then here we, we are, how many years later? And now we have the YouTubers. And, and, and now, and now they're like, wait, what if we just remove the mechas and uh, just <laughs> keep the idols, right? Yeah, damn. What could go wrong? And now uh, we have VTubers. AKB48 pushed their glasses up and was like, <laughs> we know what to do. <laughs> I feel underqualified to even rate Cow's List. I feel like Cow's List is, is probably good. It, I just don't, it I is, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's solid um, and very car for sure. <laughs> All right, let, do you want to check out this last one? All Let's right, look at Shindos, let's check out Shindos. Uh, I wonder if they've kept it for last because it's weird. Yeah, let's find out. I have no clue what he could have put on. Just, just look at this be the most- All right, here we go. Ooh. Oh. Oh, wow. 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 This is not what I would have expected. This is not what I expected. Oh There's a my lack of God. fucked up stuff. He's got some <laughs> fucking good shows here, bro. All right, so Ghost in the Shell, uh, mm -hmm. Jojo Stardust Crusaders, okay. Record of Lotus War, fucking beast, Grin Lagan, Evangelion, Nausicaa, Mushishi, Escaflone, and Attack on Titan. Okay. Fuck yeah. Fuck, fuck yeah. I fuck with it. Dude, Mushishi and Escaflone and Nausicaa on here, so good. Excuse me, Gurren Lagan as well? well yeah, obviously, dude. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm JoJo's not counting. I'm not swag. counting like JoJo grilling on Ava and. Uh, and Ghost I, in the Shell, I very much. I, I like he put Ghost in the Shell, but standalone complex. Yeah. Uh, which is to me the best Ghost in the Shell. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Um. So it. Yeah. Dude, big props for fucking Mushishi though. That that is still, in my opinion, one of the most underrated. That is the anime. most Joey anime of all. It time. is one. Of, it's <laughs> such an underrated anime. It's so good. It's I, the the anime equivalent of lighting a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, ne I've never, I've only, that's just going off clips I've seen of the show. Yeah. It's the equivalent of like- No, hey, it's, it's kind of more the equivalent of like, you know, smoking out of a pipe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah a little bit fancier. No, but Mushishi is, it, I, I still think visually, it was so incredibly ahead of its time. Um, And the story is just so fucking captivating. And it's, it's so good. And the manga is amazing as well. Yeah, it's it's, it's a great show. Yeah. Um, I just, I, it's funny looking back on Mushishi and just like knowing Joey as a mate, I look at Mushishi <laughs> and I'm like, this is- This was made for me. This is everything <laughs> that encapsulates Joey as a vibe in there. Yep. You know, if, if, 
you know, this could be a fucking album cover or something, you know, and- uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, Mushishi manga covers yeah. are album covers. <laughs> yeah, that's what just, is, they're so aesthetic. What is record, I, I mean, I know what it is, but what is record of Lo Lotus War about? Record of Lotus War is, oh God, when did it, when did it come out? Fuck, 90s, 80s? I, I think it's thinking, 90s. 90s, right? Early yeah, then it came out. Let me it's see. Records of Lotus Wars. 1990. 1990. Okay. Well, I was technically right. What's the show about? It's uh, about a Lotus War, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, have you seen it? I haven't seen oh, it in a okay, long time. Okay. I don't remember. Have exactly. you seen it gone? I haven't seen oh, it. Oh, okay. Either. So none of us have seen this. So yeah. we, yeah. I, I've heard about the show f it's weirdly. I, I have often. seen it. I remember nothing about it, though. Lo dos to thank you. Created from the aftermath of the last great battle of the gods, Lotus and his kingdoms have been plagued by war for thousands of years as a quiet peace and unity finally mm. seen, uh, became foreseeable over the land an unknown evil being uh, begins to stir. An ancient witch has awakened, bent on preserving the island of Lotus by creating political unbalance throughout the many kingdoms and keeping anyone from maintaining central control. So I it's mean, like a political There is a uh, certain, is it, is it an isekai? No, is I it think it's just a fantasy. Fantasy isn't it? is it? Okay, are these a political fantasy? Because I have seen like uh, a lot of it. Kind of, if it's kind of nostalgic looking back at a lot of '90s fantasy, because the '90s era of anime did have a lot of fantasy, and funny enough, a lot of isekai as well. It was just totally a totally different vibe than what you see in like the modern isekai. Uh, landscape right now, a lot of the fantasy back then was about these kind of like epics and something more traditional, some, something more in line with what you see with like traditional JR token kind of like world-esque. Yeah. Uh, I think one of my favorites was Three Kingdoms as well. That was a big fantasy mm. that came out as well. What about, um? obviously- What's the, what's the one from the, the now and- now and then here and now, yeah. now and then here and there. Um, Cause he has another East Guy fantasy on here as well. Uh, I'm not sure, I think this is just a fantasy, but Escalflone. Escalflone, mm. classic. People forget that it is an Isekai. It is technically an Isekai, just oh, shit, totally different right. vibe. I'm That's telling you, there's so shit. many Isekai that came out in the nineties. Oh my God. Right? It was right. just, it was just totally different. Yeah. It, it wasn't seen as bottom of the barrel entertainment. It was, it, mean, just, it was just more classic yeah. kind of like, they, Narnia, they were, guess, they were guess, better at hiding the concept. Well, was, maybe guess, maybe yeah. it's just the people who grew up with those are now working and the ones <laughs> making all these damn stories because they were so inspired by stuff like Escaflow. I mean, technically, you know, Inuyasha is an isekai. Inuyasha is an isekai, yeah. <laughs> Which everyone forgets. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think the big difference is that nowadays isekai is used as kind of like a mechanic to get the main character somewhere to a fantasy world. Mm. and. The big difference is that the protagonist always has no problem being in the fantasy world. Mm. But all of the 90s isekai that I remember all revolved around, hey, how the fuck do I get back home? So I, I, I have the reasonings uh, for some of these, which is there any that you guys want to hear about? Yeah, I would love to know records of Lotus War. Okay, record of Lotus War. OG Tolkien slash D&D anime that lives mm. rent free in my soul. There we go. Uh, be uh, Deed lit is best goal and everybody's first elf crush. <laughs> I love to know why JoJo's on there. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. OST alone makes it one of the best ever. Uh, Stardust True. Crusaders is my favorite. Stone Ocean best OP. Barely beating Bloody Stream. Bloody Stream is fucking go. Bloody stream yeah, is Bloody Stream. But Bloody Stream isn't Stardust though. No, Bloody Stream it's, is- uh, Battle Tendency. Battle Tendency, yeah. yeah. That, is, that is the most fucking hype OP yeah. all time, fight me. What about Escaflone? Escaflone, uh, Isekai before it was cool. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> fantasy Max, great OST. Uh, fantasy Max. He said Fantasy Max twice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Say no more, Fantasy Max. Mushishi. Mushishi, epitome of anime as vibe. Uh, characters <laughs> See are what so, I mean? Characters are so drenched in sadness, I can't help but love them. Agreed. Okay, uh, Nausicaa? Nausicaa, uh, let's see. Uh, peak Miyazaki, fantastic storytelling with great characters, amazing and haunting OST, still waiting for a manga adaptation. Huh. Yeah, there, there is a manga adaptation, isn't there? There isn't apparently. Oh shit. Um, Evangelion, because he's another person who's put on the list. We'd love to know why. Evangelion, where is Evangelion it? Evangelion is just simple. Have you felt depression? This then. series is probably on anybody's top five, a genre in oh, itself. Mine. Perfect mix of edginess, militarism, talk starts of nostalgia and emotional trauma, Oscar best. 
Hell yeah. How dare you? Hell yeah. I love now, that's, how I, that's how I knew he was a man of culture. How could you, Shindo? <laughs> Only anime fans would be like, yeah, militarism. <laughs> Some deep th topics. <laughs> also, this 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 girl's best girl. <laughs> Can you imagine? That just sums up weebs perfectly. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. But yeah, um, I'm surprised of the lack of, I guess, like you know, like uh, sexual shows. <laughs> I am not. I am not. Really, this is like the free run thing, where uh, you know, if it's too in your face, then a lot of a lot of like artists or fan artists that yeah. I've seen are just aren't fucking interested. Because why, why would you, there's no imagination there. There's no way you can take, mm. you know, there's no interesting thing you can take that character that hasn't already been presented. It, yeah. yeah. He does like, he did mention that he likes, what is it like, like not looting, but-, but Pushing like, the yeah, boundary. Yeah, like figuring out how yeah. to yeah. take it further. Yeah, this it, is- It just does surprise me that the guy who made Metamorphosis uh, likes Mushishi. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, not a combination I thought would work, but I guess I, it makes I, sense. I see it. Cause like, I, I feel like a lot of the times I, you know, I'm sure with you as well, talking to like different authors mm. and what they like. Sometimes you ask them what kind of series you're into and it's never the series you think it's going to be. Yeah. Sometimes the most fucked up or you know, sometimes the authors that make the most fucked up stories or sometimes the most like well, I remember deep. When, I remember when Shindo was on the show, he said his favorite manga was Spy Family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of out of Which is like, whoa, all right. <laughs> Good on you, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I was talking to uh, oh shit, oh. Vin Saga of the Yukimura, Yuki, uh, Makoto Yukimura. Yeah, and I was like, so why why do you want to do Vikings? And uh, wait, let me let me let me let me remember the name. There's this there was this like Viking cartoon that inspired him, uh, and you know inspired him to kind of like make a Viking story outside of just being Vikings. What, what, Is like it asterisk? Is it Vicky Vicky the Viking? He's such a Vicky the Viking or something like that. Vicky the Viking. Oh yeah, animated series. Vicky and he the showed Viking. me this shit. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Whoa. You came on a sensei, what? This, this became Midland Saga? <laughs> this, this inspired, I have no idea. <laughs> What what's next? One Punch Man author watch Cal you yeah. growing up? Like yeah. <laughs> pretty bizarre. Like, like you're like, well, this is this is not the vibe I thought it was going well, to be. That is awesome. I love that. <laughs> I mean, he just seems very wholesome in general. He, though, he just know. seems very wholesome in general, yeah. which you know, surprising. Oh, they had a live action apparently. Yeah, sometimes surprising when you see these authors that do these <laughs> heavy, deep, piercing stories, and then Damn. they're like, "What you? So what do you actually like? What do you watch?" And they're like, "Oh, I like Spy Family, Man, or I like I, Vicky the Viking." I'm sure it's fire. I'm sure it's yeah. fire. It's like, I just like the fact that Vicky had no enemies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this looks like a show where she does have no enemies. Yeah, <laughs> like what you know, it feels like it's like a. It's like when you like whenever you find out any inspiration is so simple. Yeah, you're like, what? It's like, have you seen that? There's this like short that's been going around. It's um, I think it's when the one of the gorillas artists he's saying what how he got like the starting of um. Oh, I've seen this oh, one. Yeah, uh, and it's the preset. It's on a clear preset. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just play, and it's just the entire it's like, like it's the rock one preset. Yeah, yeah. Right. And you're like, what? <laughs> that's how you can't. You didn't even come up with it. You just you heard it. <laughs> he just heard that and was like, I'm just gonna add a rap onto this. Yeah, it yeah. was uh, what is it? It's uh, the Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Yeah, yeah, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Yeah. This is Clint Eastwood. It's like, and it's you're like, there's no way. There's no way. And it's like the same with like Daft Punk where you find out some of their. Some of their songs, some yeah. of the beats are just straight up, just yeah. other songs. Yeah, wasn't it? It was like it was like a '90s Casio keyboard that he bought at a garage sale, yeah, and he yeah. just like pressed the Doom. rock one Rest, preset, yeah, and Doom. it was literally Doom. just Clint Eastwood. Yeah, and it's like that's yeah. so awesome. Got some Damon did, Albarn. What did you? Yeah, use? when that short became viral, I'm sure some audio audio engineer somewhere around the world was like. See, that's what I was been saying all of these years. Yeah. Buy out all the Casio keyboards. <laughs> it's free range. Oh my god. But yeah, um, interesting pick, Shindo. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I guess great, great picks all around. Great, great picks, picks all around. Yeah. All around. Some interesting and stuff. Some some clear favorites keep popping up. Mm -hmm. Death Note, Attack on Titan, Evangelion. Yeah. Um, and uh, Zankyo no Terra. Zankyo no Terra. Zankyo no Terra, Twice. yeah. Impressive. Great music, great music, what Hell can yeah. I say? Hell yeah. And I would say nothing was too surprising as well. No, Everything- no. Sydney's was probably the most surprising. Yeah, I'd say so. I think she, I think she, I think it's because she became more of a manga reader. A lot of her anime kind of like represented the shit she watched when she was younger. And yeah. she just yeah. stopped watching anime. Yeah, that's fair. Um, 
because she showed me her manga three by three, and I'm like, oh, this is. Um, <laughs> wait, let me let me see let me see what she put on her manga three by three. Why is is it like just a bunch of not very well known shows or, um, or is it just very Sydney? Okay, so I'm just going to name these out. Sure. So, Kitchen Princess, uh, Drops of God, Okay, Wakakuzake, okay. Monster, <laughs> Okay, Shiki, Yeah, Stargazing Dog. Never heard of that one. Uh, it's it's a it's a manga about a dog. All right, that's that, okay. Say less. Say that's less. a manga about a dog. This one, this one was the biggest one that surprised me. Onani Master Kurosawa. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's that. That, that I was mean, like, that is a great fucking manga. That that was her most surprising one. So Onani Master Kurosawa, Masturbation Master Kurosawa. Oh. <laughs> it's it's actually uh, it's actually really funny though. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, it's actually like it's like an incel redemption story. It's actually oh, one of one of the more of that. Yeah, it's actually one of the hardest. This was before like the incel movement came out, but it's actually a story of a really, really fucked up guy. And it's kind of like an inspiring redemption story oh, of yeah. this like fucked up incel. Um, yeah, a lot of these are just uh, cooking manga, alcohol and uh, cute dogs. I'm surprised. Which is Sydney. Yeah, yeah. Which is Sydney. I'm surprised then she didn't put the Shiki anime on a three by three and instead decided to go with Higurashi. Uh, she put the Shiki manga yeah, because she was like Shiki mangas. I mean, the, yeah, way better. It, it is better for sure. Yeah, but that was all the three by threes. And guess watching. what, guys? If you are over on our Patreon, patreoncom slash trash taste, then we've actually released a three by three where we go over the patrons' three by three anime and give our thoughts on it. So if you'd yeah. like to check it out, hey, here's a little clip of it. And you have fucking Legend of the Galactic Heroes, which is easily the best space opera story ever told. And then you fucking have. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes you. you gotta be true to yourself. He's uh, true to like, himself. He's, so, you know, you- He likes incest. Every, every time. <laughs> and if you'd like to be in the next Patreon video like this one, then uh, head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Links in the description. But hey, look at all these patrons. Look at all of them. Ooh, so look beautiful. at all of them right Supporting there. Supporting the show, beautiful. amazing Thanks people. <laughs> What did you guys think of our guests three by threes? Let us know in the comments. And uh, hey, thanks for watching guys. If you want to support our show, patreon.com slash trash taste. Also follow us on Twitter, send us your memes on the subreddit. If you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. And we'll see you guys in the next, probably not anime related one because we filled our quota up already. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye. Bye.